All right, folks, it looks like my time is up as your host for the evening, uh, as your host for the weekend, actually. But I'll be back next weekend. So catch me then. Make sure you're there. Set your alarms. But before I leave, I just want to read one last donation that we got from Shuli. A four dollar donation. Of course, it had to be four because we had a nice rounded number and she had to ruin it. But that's fine. Thank you very much, Shuli, saying don't mind me just messing with Crunchy. See, while also raising money for the kids. Enjoy the uneven number, Crunch. Less than three smile. No, no. But anyways, my time is up, folks. Like I said, it was a pleasure hosting for you. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm going to gracefully pass this on over to CJ. Thank you. Thank you very much, Crunchy Brown. It, it's me, CJ. It's all good. And I have come back to Estet again on the same day. <laughs> Let me get some choo-choos in the chat, please. Thank you to everybody for the great runs today. Thank you to everybody for the donations. Thank you to everybody for just hanging out, you know? We had some big raids. We had some big donos. And we are sitting here staring down the barrel of $3,000, which I have to say for weekend one of uh, Speed Doxathon, pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. You know, I think we can do it. We have Schlongster coming up with Banjo-Kazooie. We have Outrageous Josh doing all Power Cells checkpoint randomizer, which is going to be great. I think we can hit 3K this weekend. That gives us such an edge going into next weekend. It's also our goal. 3,000 is the goal. Next weekend would be all gravy, and we have a lot of stretch goals and milestones planned for those, you know, amounts, you know, we're starting to get into as that 2020 20 um, totals, and we're getting into you know the total for Estat 2022 21, and everything is really coming together, and everyone has been super passionate and talented, and you know it's been really great to see everyone donating, everyone being so generous. It's fantastic. 
So remember, there are prizes. Uh, the Monster Hunter Punter poster did just close, but you can donate $5 and get into both of the um, Banjo raffles. The Gruntilda plush, that is $5 cumulatively or in one single donation. And you can also get uh, the poster, which is the same, it's a different raffle. One donation of $5, or if you've donated $5 cumulatively over the course of the day, will get you in for those raffles. They're really cool. They're really great. I would add that we have the two grand prizes you can still donate to. We have the grand prize for weekend one. That is ending tonight at the end of Outrageous Josh's run. The Elgato Wave 3 microphone is done tonight. That is $25 in a single donation or cumulatively across the weekend. And you can obviously still donate... So if you donate right now, if you donate $25 and you haven't yet, okay, cumulatively over this weekend, if you were able to donate $25 for the Wave 3 mic, you are already in to win the Stream Deck next uh, Monday. So keep that in mind. There's a lot still going on. There's a lot of pool left to play. All right. Um, we are getting ready for Banjo-Kazooie. Let's check in on how that's coming along. Will is here. Zeno says, Whoa, I am here and made special time to watch a BK run. That's awesome, Quill. Thank you for coming back. We did miss you. Asmi says, and Knuckles. Shout out to Asmi. Um, Speed Docs alumnus. Friend of the show. All right, everybody, it's time. We're starting the second to last run, the penultimate spectacular of Speed Docs 2020, Speed Docs 2022 Weekend One. We are going to take a quick pause for the cause, hear from our friends, hear from our great charity. But when we come back, we'll be live with Banjo Kazooie 100% No FFM by Schlongster. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Hello, I hope you're enjoying Speed Doxathon. I'm Zach from Save Data Team, and I'm here to tell you about our channel in this brief intermission. At Save Data Team, we make a lot of stuff, such as video essays breaking down the music in the Legend of Zelda series, to this video essay on the history of the history of world record progression videos, in which I interviewed content creators like the Speed Docs guys themselves to learn how their content gets made. But we also do Let's Plays like our Ace Attorney with an Actual Lawyer series, <laughs> Live. <laughs> Like a dog. <laughs> and even this stream where we played Celeste, but our Twitch chat could kill us at any time. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You oh. best. <laughs> so, if anything I said sounds interesting to you, head over to Save Data Team on YouTube and give us a watch. Thanks, and now back to the show. Alright everyone, it's time we are here with Schlongster and Asmi for Banjo-Kazooie 100% no FFM. Take it away, Schlongster. Alright, I'm Schlongster7 and uh, we have a commentator, Asmi1. Hello, hello, hello. Morning. I like how you also have Gaffy Traffy in commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? No. <laughs> going to be doing Banjo-Kazooie no FFM 100%. It's going to be epic. We're doing the the, um, the most current um, fastest route. Okay, well when you're ready, uh, give us a countdown and we'll get started. All right, on go. Three, two, one, go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Fish Longster, Fish Longster. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. Do you know, like right now, right now, yeah. On world record pace. Oh, on world record pace. Oh, Let's my go. God. Okay. <laughs> you guys know what you're witnessing right now? This Dude. Is, this is history in the making. Dude. Okay, don't blink. Don't miss it. <gasps> don't blink. Do not blink. Don't blink. All right. All right. Oh, nice backflip. This is uh, 100% no FFM. Uh, no cheater category, no, no, all pure here, we're all, we're all, we're all happy, right, right. Nice collie wobble. That was a good collie wobble. <laughs> it was. I assume most people know, but FFM is just like a glitch where you go into a pre-made file before a run, you game over it in Furnace Fun, uh, and then you start with all the moves when you enter Mumbo's Mountain, and that changes the route pretty significantly somewhat, uh, and it saves about like 2 minutes and 50 seconds, and this category is going to ban that glitch. Uh, but as a result, you have to find a lot of funky ways to route levels in order to not to avoid backtracking. So it'll be cool to see all these different like different routing options, right? But yeah. Right now we're just collecting classic six honeycombs to get an extra health so we don't die because Johnson might die. Maybe. Exactly. It's scary and it's scary in Spiral Mountain. <laughs> Quite scary. I will not say if we have seen someone who's died here or not. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Someday. <laughs> Someday. Someday. There's actually, um, no one died, but there's actually a clip of uh, one of my friends, um, it was during a Trollis tournament, <laughs> and they were just getting straight bullied by the Collie Wobble, and he was like, it was like, he was like soft lock, so he just couldn't move, and he kept bouncing on the Collie Wobble, it was hilarious. Yeah, so like some enemies in Spiral Mountain, uh, only some enemies actually hurt you, I don't, but like most of them don't touch you, don't like hit you if you like touch them, they'll just bounce off. Yeah. yeah. That's the end of that, because like in... When we enter this lair, all enemies will just like hit you as soon as they touch you, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right there we see Grunty struggling to fit inside her transformation machine, which is why she's using the machine to, to gain her, what she perceives as beauty, but we all know beauty's on the inside. Grunty, you don't need to change for us. Exactly. Grunty, we so like beautiful. you just the way you are. Mm -hmm. 
Anyways. Anyways. Uh, I guess the movement here. Normally, we would stop doing this movement as soon as we enter Momo's Mountain since that's what we do in FFM. But we're going to be using this movement technique until we learn Talent Trout, which is the fastest move. This movement technique is fastest until then, which is just rolling, rolling. Right when Banj is walking just on normal flat ground, just just walking, he's at like a speed of 500. When you roll, uh, you gradually accelerate to a speed of 600. Uh, and then at the end of the roll, you actually like, slow down, so you want to jump out of it. And your jumping and fluttering is also a speed of 500, so you just want to maximize your rolls here. But then when we get Talon Trot, Talon Trot is a constant speed of 700. So that just demolishes our movement speed for any other option. So that's what we'll resort to afterwards. Right here, actually, these... Ooh, that was kind of close. Yeah. He's, uh, he's getting up to these platforms. It's not as easy as it looks because uh, you got to make sure that uh, you don't stay onto the hill on the hill that often because if you stay on the hill too long, you'll slide off. You have to make sure that you jump off before your slope timer resets, and basically what that is is like, uh, in a lot of slope, in a lot of uh, slopes in the, this game, you'll just slide off if you walk over it. But if you uh, if you get your shadow off of the slope and onto like a normal platform where you can stand, uh, you can abuse it so that you can just stay on the slope indefinitely. If your shadow is on the slope, as timer will start taking down, and when that timer reaches max, then you'll just start sliding. So. Just gotta make sure you don't you're aware of that when you're doing this this business. But yeah, uh, right here, that was his first jiggy. Uh, you actually pecked into that jiggy. You don't have to peck into that jiggy, although they're slightly faster. But like, typically you want to peck into jiggies because if you don't, then uh, Banjo will do an animation of just getting out of talent trap, which is really slow. So yeah. I don't know if you saw it there, but right there you got he got somewhat of a funky token that was like right behind the Stonehenge area. That's a it's actually somewhat of a slow token. That's like two and a, that's like uh, a 2.7 second token, I believe, from my last timing if I remember, uh, which is relatively slow compared to a lot of the tokens that we get. But the thing about this route is that you go to Mumbo's, then you go to uh, TTC, then Clankers, then after Clankers, it's uh, BGS, then FP, then, Mumbo, then then Mad Monster Mansion. All three of those levels have a transformation, and transformations cost tokens. So if you have three of those levels back to back to back, then you're going to be starved on tokens, which means that we have to go out of our way at the early game for them, uh, and then later on afterwards we can just get as fast uh, the fast tokens in the way. It's kind of interesting because uh, becoming the pumpkin in Mad Monster Mansion. Uh, that's when, that that's the point where token routing isn't as tight anymore. Before that point, the average token is about like two and a half seconds, uh, which is very, very slow. After that point, the average token is like half a second, which is kind of crazy. So, a lot of, a lot of routing timing to see exactly which token is optimal. Bronx are stealing, stealing the jiggies from Konga. Konga's a well-earned jiggies. Exactly. It's, it's mine. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> it's never getting it back now. Never. Poor guy. He's just sitting there tossing his oranges. He wasn't bothering anyone. Exactly. And a bear and a bird just come out of nowhere. Yeah, true, man. the true villains. They ruin his coasters on the ground. Like what the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> The nerve. Ooh, that was it. That was close. So right here, you see Slong taking taking advantage of the slope of stuff. He's getting a shadow off and off the slopes just to just to you know stay on it as fast as he can. Oh, yeah. This big jump nice. down here. Oh, the camera's twisting. No. That actually kind of sucks because uh that juju. The, the totem pole is turning around. You start turning when you exit the loading zone from Ticker's Tower. And you want to make a good cycle, an optimal cycle, by just having optimal movement until this point. So he's not facing the wrong way by the time you get to him. So it seems like Chaucer made the perfect amount of mistakes. <laughs> yeah. In this one cycle. So it worked out for him. I was like, it still worked. <laughs> I was slow enough and made a full cycle. <laughs> what a genius, dude. Exactly. Strongster has no flaws. <laughs> no flaws at no all. No flaws. <laughs> Absolutely none. 
here. We're being polite. We're not gonna wake up Mungo because he's taking a nap. Exactly. Hard, hard work of doing nothing all day. Mm -hmm. You know, it can relate. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, uh, if I don't know if I mentioned it, but every single level is just just some basic uh, qualifications for the run criteria. What we're trying to do is just get 10 jiggies in the lair, 10 jiggies in every level, 100 notes in every level, and two honeycombs in every level. Oh, you're doing this this strategy, eh? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Big man over here. Let's see if he gets it. Let's go. Oh damn, he got it. Let's go. What a genius. So right there, I don't know if you've seen it, but Schlonster skipped the Jiggy Jig right there. That's actually a trick that people implemented after I stopped running the game. But what it does, what's happening there is, uh, if you touch it, if you get a Jiggy by going from the water to the Jiggy without touching the ground, then the game will assume you're still in the water, so you'll skip the Jiggy Jig. And right there is actually especially really good, because a normal Jiggy Jig, like this one that he's doing right here, this is about four and a half seconds. But Schlosser skipped the dance from the 10th Jiggy Jig, which is eight and a half seconds long. So he saved a lot of time there. Uh, and yeah, that's generally what we want to do for most of the Jiggies in this game, because four and a half seconds every Jiggy, that's, that adds up a lot over the run. So as many places as we can, we try to skip the Jiggy Jigs. But yeah, Schlosser did there really well. The alternative option to skip that Jiggy Jig specifically... Wait, so I'm sorry, you didn't TTC early? Yep. Hell yeah, let's I'm gonna do it. <laughs> this is this is, this is going to be epic. I'm so excited. So right here, Schlongster is going to... He didn't open TTC. It, it cost two Jiggies, but he's, he's stingy. He doesn't want to doesn't, doesn't use those, right? Exactly. So I need all candy, of them. Flips his camera slightly to the right then flicks his joystick and jumps into the, the bottom of the cannon. And that creates the perfect amount of lag to just clip in, and jump on top. Ooh, that was really good. Wait. Let's go! Let's go. Heck yeah. He clips in, so he goes out of bounds on top of the cannon. And then all the water around the whole area, that extends underneath just a bit. So he tries to flutter into that water and dive as soon as possible so he doesn't surface and go above the land. And then once you dive, you can actually go as far down as you want. Like if you just keep swimming down, you won't stop swimming until you void out. The only way you'll stop swimming is if you go, if you, if you swim to an area where there's no like surface of the water, which is in this case, uh, just underneath the actual level itself. So Schlongster swims there at a perfect height, so he can just flutter right after he leaves the swimming animation, and then beak bust uh, to get into the level. Beak busting, when you beak bust, you go up and then down quickly, so he, if you beak bust from right under the level, he'll get into the level when, like, Banjo moves up before he goes down. It was perfect. It was really good. Yeah, I think he might have actually saved time with that. That's a really hard trick to save time with, because uh, TDC early, optimally, it only saves um, what was it? it only saves like up to nine seconds. At, at the like, if you do it optimally, YOLO, completely YOLO. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so not many people do it. But that was actually pretty solid. He probably saved a few seconds there, which is not bad. Hell yeah! Really quick, because I don't want to interrupt any of the important sure. explanations. We have a three-dollar donation from Crunchy Brown for oh. years. I've been searching for the perfect gamer tag. I've searched. <laughs> I've searched low. I've searched from Mexico to Hong Kong. But it turns out it was hiding in the SDAT 2022 schedule all a schlong. <laughs> I love it. There you go. All along. All along, Mr. Set. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, songs are prepping for this, all right. See this flight section? This flight section is especially rough. Wait, nice. Oh, quiet. Okay. This specific flight section is really hard for a lot of new runners. Just getting that note and not landing, or and getting that note and like having the correct amount of height while you're going on the way to the chest is quite difficult. You just have to like know how to turn properly and know the flap counts and just be confident with it. But yeah. But yeah, you may see beak bomb in normal runs, but now we don't have beak bomb obviously since we don't haven't gone to FP yet. But this is our route. Don't judge us. This is the best we can do. Exactly. If only. <laughs> If only, dude, if only. There's another interesting token we got there. Uh, just, just just, behind that door. Fun fact, it's actually on Xbox. It's faster to just walk into the loading zone to get that token. Because loading zones are instant on Xbox. Uh, 
the, that token is 3.5 seconds, or sorry, it's 3.2 seconds if you get it how Schlongster did. But on N64, if you just go through the loading zone and get that token, it's 3.5 seconds. But on Xbox, loading zones, you'll save like two whole seconds on loading zone or something, so it's a very quick token there. But this is how we make the. We'll see. Alright. God, these stairs. <laughs> oh god. Oh, oh god. no. These stairs are so awful because it either goes perfectly or it goes awful because if you slightly go to the right and just like land on the actual stairs itself, you're gonna get a buttload of lag and that's gonna just mess you up for like the rest of the stairs. Yeah, it's also it's probably the laggiest area in TTC. Yeah, it's also good to prepare your camera, which I didn't do very well. <laughs> <laughs> Totally fine. Yee, 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 yee. Still got him. Still got him. Hell yeah. Oh god, the crabs. Alright, sick. Bad crab. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, there's a lot of places where Schlongster uh, went to the bottom of like water sections without like actually swimming down there. And it's actually one of my favorite glitches. It's called the quick dive. Most people probably know about it. Basically what's happening is you're leaving Talon Trot uh, in the air, like you reach the end of your slide, let go of Z at the end of your slide so Banjo starts leaving Talon Trot. You start leaving Talon Trot in the air, then Banjo just uh, does the animation to get out of Talon Trot while you're just sinking to the bottom of the water. And after you reach the bottom of the water, then he starts like reacting to the water. Right there's a neat quick dive as well. That's probably one of the hardest quick dives in the game, actually. But you got it. Right here we're doing nipper skip. This is a neater skip. Just if you can, you can just if when he's like, oh god. Okay, you got it. <laughs> okay, I was like, what the hell, man? Oh, what the hell? Nipper is uh, closing his arm towards his face. You can just like walk underneath and then activate his text by just standing right in front of him. And right after his text, you skip his text, he's like, his face isn't there for a second. So you can just jump into him and then start pecking him from behind. And then if you time it right, right enough, yeah, that definitely kill these guys. Don't yeah, take just, just in case. <laughs> you can yeah, actually take damage, and then once you get the jiggy, you'll take another damage while thus yeah. dying. <laughs> kind of rare, but it's actually with the optimal health, you do that every single run, and that's just like a place you can lose the run to. But it's kind of rare, so it's not that bad. Not that bad. They can be rough. I got tree jump! Let's go! Nice. Normally in FFM runs, that jump is only not not super worth it. Saves like a second and a, and a half, so and it's kind of hard. Uh, but in this run, you don't have shock pad learned, so there's no alternative, so you have to do that jump. <laughs> Alright, wait. Let's see if you can get this. Oh god. Let's go! Nice. Alright. So he did a leaky skip right there. What he did was pooped eggs and then started walking towards bottles till his eggs went inside of leaky. And it's very important skip because you're overlapping bottles teaching you the move and the cutscene. But not only that, uh, whenever you learn a move in this game, bottles will refill your health. And you don't want to refill your health because you're going to death warp. So if you can uh, overlap the cutscenes, you can skip bottles refilling your health, which will save you a good bit of time. Honestly, l failing that skip in the worst way possible probably loses like upwards of like 15 seconds, which is very, very sad. Yeah. Very, very sad. Quite sad indeed. Getting everything in a flight here. Epic. This is the only weird part I feel like in this route, just like slowly flying towards that single honeycomb in the background. Yeah, because usually... We didn't forget about you. Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my Whoopsies! God. <laughs> you didn't see okay. anything. <laughs> you didn't see anything. It's okay, it was calculated. He needed that feather. Very precise feather management. Exactly. And I also needed to lose health. So perfect. Yeah, yeah. He needed to lose health too for the death orb. Very, very calculated. <laughs> he did two things with that one move. Isn't that crazy? Calculated. Right here. This is why Schlongster is on world record pace right now. World record pace. Absolutely, no doubt about it. <laughs> you can actually get that J from the chest to land in the water, but it 
because you have to wait for that chest to like walk all the way around it only saves like one second and it's kind of inconsistent because the way that jiggy works is that uh when you break the chest it'll spawn like at a certain angle and that angle is determined by like a lot of stuff that you do before in the run not not the same way as rng but like if you hit something at a certain angle then that'll change the angle of the RNG, of the the jiggy spawn if you like break a honey hive it'll change the, the angle if you beak bust a crab, it'll change the angle. It's a lot of very specific things. It's kind of weird. Don't they do that in the Taz, too? Uh, I actually don't know. I think they do. Probably. Most likely. Very likely, yeah. I hear spelling, uh, Kunky Bozunky. As we know how to spell. Get the cool death for him. Oh god, that looks scary. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, while you're <laughs> ground pounding, we do have another donation. Oh boy. We have a $18 donation from Mama CJ that says, Gotta get that even number for Crunchy. Loving this run. Mama CJ, oh, baby. Oh, hell yeah. Nice name. Hell. <laughs> hey, listen, now that's my mom. We're just saying it's a nice name, all right? It's a good name. It's a great right, name. Let's, well, let's keep it that way. <laughs> yeah. If only we Speaking had... of the donations, uh, we have an incentive. For Slongster to, to to get the ice key as the B. Actually, don't Slongster. Do you even have the ice key on this file? <laughs> is I, it collected? Oh, oh wait, is it? Once you collect it, you have, it's not. You're not gonna be able to collect it anymore. Uh, you know, I'll I'll, I'll let you guys figure that one out for yourself. My dude, my dude, if you scam the people, I'm gonna be very angry. <laughs> it's one thing that you didn't fill out the commentary form. It's one thing that you showed up without having read the runner guide, or having any of the scenes, or that you didn't know what the incentive was. If you don't have the fucking ID, I'm gonna be so mad at you. <laughs> what, what have you been doing? Exactly. We'll, we'll just pretend it's there with our imagination. <laughs> I got a solution. I, I think you're gonna do push ups on your hands. That's what you said yeah. you were gonna do. Oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's not yeah, there, true. I will do 10 handstand push ups and do Dwarf Grunty. Alright, Clocky, you have to get his camera yeah. set up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing Door of Grunty. That's oh. we're, we're doing that. Here oh. we go. Oh, hell yeah. If you don't have the, you already have the key. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that damn key? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because, uh, Sonser went there to do, to, you know, just practice getting the ice key, uh, a couple days ago, and two things were funny about that. It was after... Sponsor made the incentive with this run and when he got there I noticed two things one the key just wasn't there <laughs> And the other thing was that when Sponsor went inside he was like, oh shit, how do I get out? <laughs> and I was like, Whoa. You had no exit strategy! <laughs> this is so horrible! <laughs> Listen, uh, we, we gotta cancel this <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's no key? We threw out his name! <laughs> Where's the key? It's okay, don't worry, we got this. This is totally under control. Every, everything's put together. Exactly. Yeah. All thought out. Yes, yes, yes. We're in for a good one. Alright, we're in Clanker's Cavern. This level kind of sucks. Just, just a little bit. Kind of a lot of it, but... You notice before we entered, we actually opened this level before we entered it, like right before, instead of early on the run. Which is kind of an, an annoying detour, because it's just because we didn't have shock pad learned, so we couldn't open the level. Which means that we had to go through two extra loading zones. It was very sad. It's about, I, I timed it, I think that's like a 13, or 12 or 13 second time loss there. Just from having to do that backtracking. But you know, we, we make do. We make mm -hmm. do. I actually had a route idea where, uh... You would skip clankers now, and then at the reset in MMM, you would uh, beak bust the eyes and then open clankers there, and then do clankers cavern at that point. That was a fun. That was a fun idea. It was just barely slower though, unfortunately. But imagine doing clankers cavern as like a you know your like sixth level. It would have been epic. Mm -hmm. Imagine. But don't worry, we still got some some neato neato burrito routing for you guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's gonna be chepic. Yeah, epic. All right. See, I like this because uh, 
we're, we're commentating a run, which means which means that uh, in theory, not many people know uh, too much about like the specific cycles, the specific details about what cycle Slong is on here. So right now, I could just say Slong is making the actual best cycle possible, and no one could doubt me. <laughs> exactly. Look at that shockster! <laughs> <laughs> the best, the best cycle ruined. <laughs> you had one. <laughs> You were supposed to clean his teeth! <laughs> My god. Okay. Second echo, totally. <laughs> Everyone's just like, best cycle, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chat's not that stupid. <laughs> it's making sense. So, like, right. sure. <laughs> Ooh, that was a nice hop on the ring right there. Hoppity hop. So ring section is a little, a little funky. It's, just, it's a pretty nice movement section. You gotta do like a lot of precise movement, movements. The best you can get here is a 24, but most people just get 22s. Sometimes you can get a 23. 24 is super difficult though. You have to do a hop like Shanks did on the first one on that ring and this ring right here. But so a lot of people just like like to not do that. 21, let's go. Behind. Really quick, another ten dollars from Aaron A. Aaron. Oh, Aaron! I know that guy. Ten dollars for this epic BK speedrun from an epic guy. Also, please have the ice key. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Smile. At this point, the incentive is just to check whether the ice key is there or not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, you're definitely checking it. <laughs> Check it right now. <laughs> No, it doesn't look like any ice. Someone stole it! <laughs> Gaffy is here now! <laughs> Long, I love you. I'm so mad at you. <laughs> You're the best, but also the worst at all times. Exactly. Aw, oh, every day. <laughs> But hey, at least you're big gaming. Always big gaming. Oh. Gaffy's also here to talk about the type of cycle he's making right now. <laughs> you bet. This is the Tsukunomi cycle. It's when Clanker actually just goes sleepy and you get the bloop, 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 bloop. Bloop, bloop. And then you do your, like, uh, your, your Bowser jumps or whatever and whatnot, and you, you, boom, cycle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, I'm just here to be the Kazooie to Asmi's banjo, I think. Put me in the backpack and carry me, coach. But who's you, better, though, to be honest? Did you sneak a Pab's blue ribbon? Because before you were like, no, 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 I'll leave it to the professionals. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to have you here. They're happy to have you here. I'm just saying. Oops, it's a change of attitude. <laughs> it's just a cameo. I, I just want to say hi. Oh, no. If I have to be here, you have to be here. <sighs> you mean it's a party? It's a party. It's not a party where you invite people, but, you know. I've invited myself. That makes it a party. <laughs> I'm happy Asmi came back, you know? He, he left two years ago, and it's been quiet ever since. Yeah, I, I, I like to make my appearances here and there, you know? I, I have a picture of him in my, uh, in my banjo <laughs> scrapbook. Oh, really? It's funny. Yeah, it's just a picture of his avatar. <laughs> Her memories. Yeah. Oh, how I miss ye. Oh, Slongster, come on. <laughs> See, yeah, it was all it was all according to getting those two notes. <laughs> yeah, totally, 100%. All calculated. That was the second cycle in Clanker's Cavern. There's only two cycles in this level. I feel like a lot of people, no, no offense, but kind of offense to everyone who's commentating runs. There's not that many cycles in Clanker's Cavern. There's only two cycles. Yeah. They're pretty easy. People are just wimps. Yeah. I said it. I said it. All right. He said it. Yeah. BGS though, that has cycles. That has more cycles. That has the rough cycles. Yeah. Hardly. You heard it here first. Yeah. Hundred percent. From what I've heard, they're also free. So I don't know. Shlong's <laughs> just not not getting them. Must be a skill issue. I know, dude. Yeah, yeah. He he just barely missed. Just just barely missed the optimal cycle for each one. Just I, I caught a cold oh. today. So I'm, uh... <laughs> yeah, you caught a cold. <laughs> it's pretty rough. He's got a hangnail. He's on the disabled list. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm an old man now. I'm in that o OT randomizer uh, <laughs> retirement home. home. Yeah. <laughs> you get sick of running Banjo, then the retirement home is either Banjo Tui Bingo 
or Ocarina of Time Randomizer. That's the retirement home. I was about to say, that's what I know about uh, Banjo Speedrunners, is that when you when you die, you become what? Ocarina of Time Randomizer guys. Exactly, exactly. Is that what you've been up to, Asmi? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's where he is. We found him, folks. <laughs> get, your, oh, get your helicopter searchlights. We found him. Oh, uh, shit, dude. <laughs> oh, no. Not like this. No, oh, no. Okay, I'll hide myself. Well. Alright, Slump is almost out of this level, the Snooze Festival level. I know. Almost out. Almost. Oh, no. It's actually not that bad. He only missed like one cycle compared to the cycles that he wanted to make, so it's, it's pretty decent. It's pretty okay. Yeah. So, it's good. Alright, now we're just gonna get this jiggy, the notes, and then the jiggy and the mute snippets uh, section, and then the death warp. And then we're done with this level. Alright. Correct the mundo. These snippets are kind of annoying. They are very, very finicky. There's a little bit of RNG to it, but I'm pretty sure you can make all art pos all, all like RNG like possibilities work. Uh, because just because you know enemy placements, you just have to like really make sure you lure them in properly. Whoops! It's a lot of micro movements. Shonster is clearly doing this optimally here. Exactly. You know, otherwise. Optimally. Listen, I'm the commentator. I would know optimal. Shlong's just doing this optimal. Right? Yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> world record holder here, by the way. <laughs> Gaffy Taffy, of course. Yeah, Gaffy Taffy. Yeah. Tom. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> he's all right. He's all right. He's kind of. Yeah, yeah. Mid. <laughs> now this is a. So I got into running just because of Schlong, and so I was like, oh, yeah, BK seems really cool. I'll give it a shot. And to this day, it's still one of the most miserable running experiences I think I've ever had. <laughs> this game is difficult, so to be even slightly off, it's like, oh, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah? I feel that, dude. I feel that. I it is feel that. Cool. Just why Asmi's in the retirement home. <laughs> yeah. He's having so much fun. How many fun. times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> <laughs> How many times? I love the young people. So fun fact about this section right here, Shlong's just drowning, right? He's going to drown to death warp. And you would think this is that this is an auto-scroller because you're just waiting for the timer to, to run out while you're getting the collectibles, but that's not the case. There's two ways you can do this section. One is if you get this Jiggy first, then the notes, then the honeycomb. And then there's the way that Schlongster did it, where you get the notes, honeycomb, then the Jiggy. The way that Schlongster did it is actually faster because when he's drowning right now, Clanker's not on screen. Uh, and the lag while you're actually like swimming actually doesn't make a difference in the timer. If you compare the most laggy angle while you're swimming compared to the least laggy angle, you could actually save like 10 seconds uh, just from lag, even though it's just like an auto scroller. So that's a little interesting little caveat there. It's actually somewhat of a recent find. I think, well, recent is like one year ago, but you know. We don't find a lot of stuff nowadays. <laughs> it's okay. Bronster opening BGS instead of doing BGS early. I can't believe it. I know. What the heck? Oh my god. <laughs> Ruined. The nerve, man. The nerve. Mm -hmm. You know what? At least he got three eggs. Those three eggs are definitely. <laughs> I like this pull. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsor punishment for no ice key, 10 handstand push ups, eyelash plucking, <laughs> eyelash plucking. <laughs> I love it. That's pretty epic. Who put nuts and bolts on there? Oh god, oh no, anything but that. Oh, oh no. Who made this pull? <laughs> Was this Satan? <laughs> Actually, that's a good punishment. I'm voting that is, for that. That is pretty big. Can I can I give my hot take? Yep. Oh no. I really like nuts and bolts. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Well, it's got driving in it, so it's naturally it's a CJ game. Yeah. It's building stuff. It's not a banjo game, but you know. Yeah. It's it's a fun game. Exactly. It's a, definitely a game. If I were to, if I were to give my honest opinion, I would definitely say that it is a game, for sure. Of all the games ever made, it's one of them. For sure, absolutely. You know, I'm glad we can find some common ground here. Is it better than the Game Boy Advance game, at least, or no? No. Well, so, okay. <laughs> I like. Nuts and bolts. I don't like the Game Boy Advance game, but I can. I like nuts and bolts, and I say it's not a banjo game. It's like what? someone made a game that was like, "Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had Forge, but with cars?" And people were like, "Yeah, let's slap banjo on it." 
Yeah. All I know is they gave it to me free with my 360, and I still never finished it. Uh, it was really garbage, but it was fun. Fun garbage. Yeah. It's just, like, you know, you, sometimes you just like a broken mess. Just like Banjo-Tooie for the Nintendo 64. Amen. Or like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> I don't know which is worse. Oh, God. All right, Slonster so entering BGS here. This is actually kind of a fun level. It's it's actually kind of an auto not auto scroll, but it's like it's a little tedious, but it is really difficult actually. Right there, you refilled on health to get the full health. Because oh, wait, you're skipping the waiting boots, right? All right. Oh no, oh no, oh no! I'm actually getting the waiting boots. Oh, you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need a general route. <laughs> Dang it! I should I shouldn't have said that because now people are not gonna think that Slaunch is doing the optimal route. I swear he's doing optimal route. <laughs> the most optimal route there is. Totally. He had to remind him to get the boots, because the boots are optimal. Yeah, yeah, totally. Exactly. I almost forgot. World almost record forgot. holder as me, the king yeah, yeah. of the retirement home. <laughs> the retirement home, yes. Totally. You guys have, like, a parade, or...? A parade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we, like, uh, just go into a call, and everyone chants my name, and I bask in the glory. Yep. Uh, okay. it's me. Uh, it's me. <laughs> the last time I went to an ASME stream, it was the face cam reveal, and then he was like, oh, and I'm doing this to get fit, and then did push-ups. <laughs> oh, that was sick. That was a fitness challenge. That was the origin of doing handstand and push-ups on stream. That's why I told us to do it now. Yeah. I, I, want, I want to mention what that is. Because that's a really very quick, fun Really quick, you can do that, right? You yeah. can do You can yeah. do that. Oh yeah, I can do 10 handstand push-ups. I'm just asking because it. we thought he could get the ice key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a good concern. It's a good concern indeed. <laughs> Don't worry. Slongster doesn't have the ice key because this is the first time he's doing it. The first time Slongster did the handstand push-up on stream, he almost broke his neck. But yeah. since then... <laughs> Break your neck on my stream, I'm gonna be so mad. And I'll kill you. I'll kill you again! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill you twice. <laughs> save the children. Yeah, save, save the children. Right? Save the children. <laughs> save the children. Save Carl. Save Carl. <laughs> save Carl. <laughs> oh, perfect. Oh god, yeah, dude. That croc is right there. That's the hardest cycle in the game to make. Uh, and Saucer totally made it right there, obviously. Exactly. <laughs> Fastest right. cycle. Wow. Yeah. But that is the hardest movement section in the game to make. The cycle. You can put me on it. But yeah. Oh yes, the, the the fitness challenge. This is what I wanted to mention. No one's done it for BK yet because BK doesn't have much as much downtime. But Banjo Two, if you ever watched Banjo Two run, uh, you may not have watched it because you may have fallen asleep because there's so much downtime. Yeah. And cuts. I'm uh, sensing you're not a fan. Basically. <laughs> However, Tom, uh, there is a we had an idea. We had a revelation one day. We we're like, what if we took all this downtime, these loading zones, these cutscenes? What if we just what if we just did exercises during them? What if we just got fit? What if we just got off our lazy butts? What if we just you know made something useful out of ourselves, right? And that's when the Two Fitness Challenge was born. Two E Fitness Challenge. In Banjo Tui, what you do, every single note, every single note, you do five jumping jacks. Every single jiggy, you do five push-ups. Every single Cheeto page, you do five sit-ups. Every single honeycomb, you do five sit-ups. Every single globo, you do ten, uh, five squats. Every single jinjo, you do five squats. Every single move you learn in the game, you plank for 30 seconds. And if he bonks, which is a 10% chance, plank for a minute. And then at every every level you open, you do a couple handstand push-ups, and that was the origin. And we want to launch it. We want we want we want to try and do it for BK one day, but there's no downtime in BK, so it's kind of kind of hard to do, you know. Yeah, it's like no. Is there the whole thing in Bin Tui where it's like, you come book him, you come book him, and he's like dancing and singing. You're agonizing boulder cuts. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh wow, someone really thought this was a great idea and a good use of resources? Question mark. So do you guys just plank the whole time? <laughs> you know what? The dominoes yeah, yeah. that have led to you doing it right now alone has made it worth it to me. <laughs> what? Uh, if that sequence didn't exist, then we wouldn't get CJ doing the Eakin Bokum song right now on stream. So yeah, there you go. For that alone, Tui's a masterpiece. There you go. There you go. Never played it. Yep. Anyways, about the run. This, this run here. Slons has been, he's been cruising. I don't know if you saw, but he was jumping on top of the huts instead of breaking them open. Just a nice three second time save per hut he's jumped on. Uh, 
it's not that precise, but it's, it can be difficult. But the thing about BGS right here, it's kind of funky because there's a little backtracking, but there's no way around it because our route for BGS is basically just fixed around the Croctuses here. So you're basically just going wherever the Croctuses spawn. We don't have control of ourselves. We just we're followers. We're sheeple. We're not we're not leaders. Bandit is, <laughs> Bandit is not a bear. He's a sheep. True. Uh, yeah, we're just following we're just following the Croctuses and doing stuff along the way. Basically, that was a clean kill right there. Easy. Clean. But yeah, I was mentioning earlier, uh, you can, uh, in this, in the run, it's actually kind of interesting, so, our criteria for 100% is just 900 notes, uh, shit, is there an, 90 jiggies, right? 90, were there 90 or 100? Oops. I don't remember. 100 jiggies, I'm gonna say 100 jiggies. 100 jiggies, <laughs> 24 honeycombs, uh, and beat Grunty. Uh, moves are not a part of our criteria. Because they're not on the total screen, so it's just complete the total screen. That's our that's our prerogative, uh, which means that we can skip moves if we want. And technically, it's optimal to skip learning waiting boots in this run because we never use them outside of BGS. We never use them. Uh, although, if you skip them in BGS, it's going to be kind of difficult because that means you have to walk through the entire maze uh, by taking damage, and then at the very end, just use a buttload of nice nice note patch, Longster. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, is this showing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> There we go. Gotta write these down. <laughs> I'm totally memorizing the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't look at this. He's, he's memorizing. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm never gonna forget this. Right <laughs> you, you have burned this into my memory. The, the king of... Wait, are you allowed I'm... to use external tools? This seems like... This oh, is a tool-assisted speed run! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's entering the, the Konami code into BK right now. Trust this me. This is a part of the run. Trust me. Trust in the process. Trust <laughs> you still got her on. I only put six on there. Whoops. Everybody start saying colors. Name your favorite color. <laughs> Blue. Oh, no. There we go. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Just, just, yeah, okay. just, forget, just forget what happened. It's, it's not a big deal. We shouldn't <laughs> see it anyway. It's okay. Disregard the last 30 seconds. I forgot it was on the left side. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Get that note. Get, give me that. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. <laughs> that, that note that note is the hardest boss in the game. Especially if I was missing it. <laughs> Alright. So Tip Tip is actually one of two of the annoying mini games in this run in this level. The mini games are only honestly like the only part of this level that really sucks because both mini games combined are like like five minutes of just pure nothing. Autumn nothingness. R they both have stupid RNG. They're both just like doing nothing, just like waiting for it to be over. And this level itself is the second longest level next to Click Clock Wood. It's a uh, in isolation, optimally, it's 12 minutes and 30 seconds, and five of those minutes is just tipped up in vile, which is very sad. Yeah. So, so much non-movement. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But other than that, this level is very hard, because optimally you have to do a lot of health management, which is kind of rough, but... Frost is making it through. He's, he's, he's doing it. He's doing it fine. He's doing it fine. Yeah. Perfectly. Perfect. Perfect. If you fall here, you have to do 10 handstand push-ups. I'll totally do it, actually. I'll do 10 handstand push-ups as punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Give the Are viewers what they want. The Mr. Vile song, is that a thing? Oh, God. I don't even That's know a, the lyrics. Listen, we <laughs> sing Disney songs. We don't sing banjos. <laughs> exactly. It's time for some Mulan. Right? Like that guy? Yeah, 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 yeah that guy. Yeah. He's oh, a not very nice uh, crocodile. Mm. <laughs> Alright, Shlong's just making sure to get three health here. Because while, while it is a minigame and it's pretty much an auto scroller, uh, it is really hard in no FFM because you don't have speed shoes. So there's somewhat of a chance that he might lose it. <laughs> he's very sad, but he's getting extra health just in case he loses it. Yeah. Uh, and extra health is kind of annoying just because Vile takes three, two hits, not one. So he has to get three health to compensate. But we'll see. We'll see. 
Yeah, I feel like it's like a little rare, a uh, small rare that like that um you'll get the like yumblies and grumblies not in your favor. <laughs> yeah. So it could be really bad. <laughs> in um in FFM 100%, you have speed shoes, and I'm telling you right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm putting it out there. If you lose to Vile, it's on you. I mean, you, you can't complain about RNG. You have a speech. Yeah. It's, it's on you, buddy. Yeah, it's on I'm, you. I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up, it's on you. I'm not saying it's it's easy. I'm just saying it's on you. But Shots in no fire. effect, you actually can get screwed by RNG. Just a bit. But you didn't have to be still... that mean to me, Asby. So it only <laughs> happened like three times, okay? <laughs> Gaffy, how could you? It's okay, it's okay. Like I said, it's not easy, but it's on you. I I no, I, 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 I messed it up. Not enough. totally fair. I understand what you mean. <laughs> I've, I've messed it up too. Like I was on a, I, I, so what happened to me was I got a, I got a sub two in this game, and then I like took a long break, for, like a year or so, and then I was just randomly shit posting a run, and it was actually on PB pace all during BGS, and then in the FFM run BGS is last, but then I lost a vial, and that was very sad because I haven't done it in a year. So, <laughs> well, I've lost a one in this, but you know, it, it is what it is, you know. Is that your <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> yes. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I can make it! Did you lose to Vile? No, no, no. Oh! I lost to Vile! Oh god, dude! Oh, the, the, the first level! <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt me! <laughs> yeah, you got me. I'm trying to run out. Go, go! You got me. Okay. Now I definitely you can't lose. <laughs> Yeah, but you didn't have shoes, so you know, that's just... Yeah, that's true. You told me you did this before! <laughs> <laughs> he, was he was too fast for me this time. <laughs> oh no, dude. Oh god. If oh. you don't have shoes, can you still outrun him when he gets angry? Uh, it depends where you are, but... The thing is, when he gets angry, he speeds up. He's like slowly walking towards you, then in an anime style, he like starts speeding up, and like he has, and at the end of it, right, right, right before you're about to enter the loading zone, his feet ends up looking like like Sonic the Hedgehog when he's running at full speed. You know? <laughs> he just goes so fast, dude. That's so fast, he's out to get you, bro. Exactly, he's just like Boggy. Yeah, exactly. All right, you got this, song, sir. Exactly. This is so scary. All right, ten seconds left. Come on. Oh no! Oh no! We're good. We're Gucci. Okay, okay, okay. That was round one. Sorry, sorry, Chad, but it's two more, two, two more rounds. Two okay. more of this. It's a lot easier. I do find it kind of interesting that, especially back then, they have a strong rubber band system. So yeah. his speed, just like, you're up by two, it doubles vile speed. But, you know, you're one underneath him, he's just crawling. Yep. So at least when I was trying this, it was like, all right, I'm just going to stay one behind him until there's like 10 seconds left. Kind of a gamble. Yeah. It is, yeah. It is just a bit of a gamble. Other than the anxiety of 20 seconds of, oh, God, he's lightning fast. Right. Yeah. Dude, Look at him. He's got the he's got the Nikes on right now. <laughs> he's got yeah. the Nikes on. Air Forces, dude. God. Vile's got some drip. Yeah. I think the the best number for Vile, like if Vile is five points ahead of you, that's when he reaches his slowest point and he won't go any slower. So that's why we try to collect uh, the items at the very beginning until we either get them all or he reaches five points. Or a bit more, because then he's just very slow and we can easily catch up. And then by the time we demolish him, and right before he starts speeding up with his Nikes, uh, the game is about to end. So usually that, that's the formula we try to follow. But, oh, that was kind of bullshit. Ooh, you, you just up. Yeah, right? <laughs> Half a second too early. It's unfortunate. Ooh. Round three is typically hardest, but it's actually the best strategy-wise because you have more information that, that Vile doesn't. Vile lacks the crucial information. Exactly. You know when the, oh. you know when the timer's about to change. You know when the Yumblies are about to change to Grumplies. So, you can just plan for that. But, you know, this is also the round where Vile moves the fastest, so it's, it's sort of sketchy, you know? It's rough. 
but you gotta trust in the boyish longster. Trust him. Trust him. Trust I'm in the process. You. I'm trusting you. I'm so scared. No! Oh no, I need to run. Oh, dog, I can't look. I can't look. So run, a tie please. does end in a loss, please. unfortunately. Oh, that was close! <laughs> okay. Oh my god, run! Okay. Okay. <laughs> Holy. Oh, you know what sucks about that? So, Vi as you saw, Vile was speeding the hell up when he was entering the loading zone. Vile bitch Schlongster when he was exiting the loading zone, which is fine. He was still alive. But that means that now Schlongster has full health. He reached a zombie banjo state. Wait, I have full health now? Full health. Yep. Oh, wow, I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even notice. That's cool. <laughs> so now, you're gonna have to take a billion hits by the buzz bomb, and that's gonna lose some time later on. At least we won't- at least we, we have a better chance of not dying to Vile, though, and then having to collect everything. <laughs> Calculated risk. Yeah. <laughs> Calculated. Now we don't have to run out of Vile's house. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> He can lose three more times now, exactly. I haven't even lost to him in so long, too. That's the, that's the funny <laughs> at part. This point, <laughs> at this point, uh, it's a race to see who kills Schlongster first, uh, Vile or CJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. CJ's like, well, he's, cra he's cracking no. his knuckles right now. <laughs> well, you know, Mr. Vile is technically closer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him have it. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I guess I fed you guys some some misinformation. Uh, I'm sorry about that. It's my fault. <laughs> totally. I, I mentioned earlier that uh, between Tip Top and Vile, it takes up five minutes of the run. <laughs> I was mistaken. I'm sorry. It actually takes about uh, ten minutes of the run. Yep. <laughs> totally. Um, that's a my that's a my bad right there. Ten minutes of the run is just taken up by Vile and Tip Top. So we just yeah. didn't, we didn't want you to be too like we wanted you to be more appealed to be like BGS, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted you to like it, but now that you're here, sunk cost fallacy, you can't escape now. You're so, ready. so probably you're motivate everybody loves <laughs> BGS, right? Yeah, totally. So probably motivate you to do FFM. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, dude. This is the one, though. Trust. Trust in the process. Trust in the process. The law of averages says he's got to win once in a while, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but Murphy's Law says anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So that is true. <laughs> we'll see whose law is bad. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like round two might be the hardest, just because you don't have any extra strategies yeah. facing them. There's not as many, like, yumblies. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. This one will be the one, though. I believe! Also, Slongster, I don't know if you know this. Just just in case it happens this time. If you're at the very end and you're tied with him, and there's not a yumbly, because yumbly's the last ten seconds mm -hmm. in sight, you can eat a, uh, oh sorry, there's not a Grumbly, because Grumbly's the last 10 seconds, I think. I don't remember, either way. The timer still switches at 1, so you can eat the other one at 1 second left to save yourself. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. So just in case. You could you could have done it last time. I, I should have told you, but... Now I know. Which ones are cuter, Grumblies or Rumblies? Rum, uh, which ones are Rumblies? Someone put it in the poll. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> just saying Yay, first, we won! <laughs> the Yumblies? Yumblies are the yummy ones. Grumblies oh. are the yummy ones. Well, that makes sense. I <laughs> yes, please. But if you eat both. True. He did it. I did it! We don't have Proud to do the level you. over again. Proud of you. Thanks, Dad. Okay, first okay. first try, honestly. First try, honestly, yeah. <laughs> he didn't die. He did, he did so. First try. Yeah. Exactly. Totally. Part of me actually got worried earlier, It's well, which it hasn't happened in a long time, but back in the day, all young Schlong still had like a three hour PB or something like that in FFM. It would go for the hut jumps every time and die like 75% of the time. So part of my brain is like, I'm gonna die off these huts, I just know it's gonna happen. Like, and it happens. At the same time, don't do it, Schlong, don't do it. <laughs> Stop trying. I, I saw the world record, dude, I must do it. Exactly. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
<laughs> I still remember when I saw Asby doing it, and he, like, when, when he missed the hut jump, like, he usually does it, but when he, like, missed it, he's like, don't look! <laughs> Everybody, close your eyes. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> we did it! That was so fast. Oh my god, look at optimal death right there, huh? So optimal. <laughs> Bye, BGS. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> yeah, miss totally. Exactly. All right, we're out. We're out. And now we're gonna go to FP1. <clears throat> FP1. Yes. Good, good level. I was also thinking uh, another interesting incentive that we could have done, but it was a bit too short notice. Uh, I was. I had an idea because. Actually, you know, I'll save it till later because I don't want to spoil it. But you know, just, just, just nothing. Later. I'll save it till later. Just a routing idea. But yeah, we're well, going. To that was riveting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome for. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you ever just like start talking and then your brain like is trying to catch up to your mouth, but then your brain can't catch up to your mouth, so you just end up spewing some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. All my life, it's 99% of the time I speak. Oh yeah. yeah you guys <laughs> All the time when I'm talking to my wife. <laughs> exactly. Hell yeah. I don't believe anything that you say. When you told me that you were like. You were like married and had a kid and like, you know, lived in a nice house. I wouldn't believe you. If you told me you were a homeless guy off the street who like just goes into Barnes and Noble every day for the free water, I wouldn't believe you. Huh, you totally you married, say. Mary. No, there's nobody. Truth there's is, you can say. The truth is I'm homeless. The cat's out of the bag. The truth is he's probably like you know, you know, awesome. And he's just he's just choosing right now. <laughs> to let all of the donut out, you know? <laughs> all of the donut. All of it, yeah. Mmm, donuts. One thing, Nico, how good. Pretty simple glitch you kill the first one, then you get the rest of the monthly spawns off screen, so then they will spawn, but they won't be like actually there. You can hear them right now, but they won't actually eat the. Yumblies. And Schlongster isn't doing proper lag reduction here. <gasps> there, we there we go, there we go. That one. Alright, there we go. You want to get as much water off screen as possible. If you have the water on screen, it actually makes a weirdly significant difference. It's like half a second to a second. Uh, but yeah, it just like lags the game and lags the timer. So yeah. There we go. Now here we're just gonna get these notes and hopefully Chloster can get this. I got nice it! Group. Epic. Epic sauce, let's go. He just shoots that blindly. It's actually a really neat trick because what happens is you have a zoomed out camera. When you're going around that circle of notes, the camera gets stuck on the pot, which means that the, the center of the camera, the camera's coming, is facing towards you from the pot. Which means that if you face the camera, or more specifically, if you just face straight down, you'll shoot the center of the pot, which is where the button is. That's how we do the no scope there. Nice little half yellow here. Let's go! Epic. Alright. There's just like a weird, like, I don't even know why. There's just like a weird platform that you can beat bust there. You're hitting the buttons. Thankfully, in no FFM, feather count's actually really, really easy to manage compared to FFM. Uh, you can skip a ton. Right? And I actually don't. Why is, why is it? Oh, yeah, it's because you go to BGS, that's why. There's a lot of stuff you can get in BGS. A lot of extra feathers, so you have a million for FP. Mm -hmm. your, um, there's yeah. no um, in DC. Yeah. In your opinion, what is like the one banjo category that's like really hard to manage feathers? Manage feathers. Oh, it's definitely any percent. Literally right now, the any percent. I have every single feather is calculated. There's no. There's like. There's no room for leniency. Any backup feather will lose you like half a second, which is sad. Uh. Then there's only three backup feathers in any percent right now. Uh, okay. for, so, just the entire run, so it's kind of sad. But it's all in the first 20 minutes, so. You, you get, you get, a, it's not too difficult. Thankfully the flight section's not too bad. The only thing is FP early, right? Because FP early is a stupid hard beak bust, beak bomb trick. If you fail it once, then you're kind of screwed. So. Like, even these feathers right here, on that ramp, there's 10 feathers there. 
you have to get at least eight of them in the optimal route for any percent. So there's only two feathers of leniency there. Which is rough. Uh, okay, Slash are doing these snowmen here. Snowmen are a little finicky. Uh, you want to aim into the center of the screen. That's just where the beak bombs aim. But you also want to aim at the left side of all these snowmen's hats specifically, just so you can get a good recoil towards the next snowman. Uh, but it's a little hard to do. Oh uh, yeah. Right here, Slash is gonna uh, he beak bust right before this cutscene plays, uh, so he can just get to the ground and just hop onto this feather. Oh, the feather. The the, the presents and make his way up this scarf. But FP is a really good place to get feathers in general, because like there's a million on this scarf, a million on that ramp I saw earlier. So, so many video. feathers, it's so awesome. So awesome, so epic. Epic, fresh, so, clean, so epic sauce. So epic sauce. <laughs> All, right. All right, I'm gonna lurk back into the shadows. Good luck, Shlong. I love you. <laughs> love you, Gav. Yeah. Thanks for com Thanks for coming. All right. Nice ginger, Slongster. <laughs> wait, did I wait did I get a ginger? Yes, you did. You just got the blue ginger right there. <laughs> oh, I did! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to get that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so used to getting that. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> I, I felt bad, dude. I, I needed to tell him he's doing he's doing great. You know, I'd be pretty I'd be pretty down if I was just on a broom all day. <laughs> yeah. I've done that same thing too, actually, before. Oh, really? Personally, like, I've ran No FFM in two different sessions. One was, like, I think right after I got my first sub 2, and nice. one was, like, just last year or something. Uh, for the entire, like, first session that I was running it, which was just, like, a few months, I got that ginger in every single run and didn't even realize that I didn't need to get it. <laughs> and that was, like, the world record for, like, the longest time. And I was like, oh. Wait, for No FFM? Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. I didn't even know. <laughs> oh. A guy named Univin told me, I was like, you know you're getting this ginger, right? You don't need it. I was like, <laughs> Oh, you're right. Well, time save there. What was the world record at the time when you were getting that? Uh, there was before bit clips, so that was like a 203. 203? Damn, without bit clips, that's pretty good. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, in FP1 here, uh, we're gonna get 100 notes, as you can see. If we're getting one note, we're getting them all. Uh, the thing about FP notes is that they're actually really nice because, uh, all notes are accessible like right at the beginning. You don't have to enter like any like real place. You don't need any moves to like get any extra notes other than like spiral mountain moves. Uh, maybe flood it as well, I guess. But like they're very open. They're all like most of them are outside. So we just get them here. And then FP2 we get a few jiggies. But the issue here with the backtracking with no FFM is that we don't have speed shoes learned. <clears throat> and that's an issue because one jiggy in here, Boggy Race 2, requires the speed shoes, so we can't do that right now. So, you have to save that for later. Uh, but, it's not too difficult, it's not too bad. Uh, we'll just save that for later, and a couple other jiggies that's just in the way. And then, it'll be, it'll be an okay route. It's not too bad, not too shabby. But right now, I'm the walrus boy. It's our first transformation in the game. Walrus boy! I was totally thinking that you were gonna get that Jinjo. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, I was like, no, I will not get another Jinjo. <laughs> Only that broom Jinjo is special. Um, yeah, the blue one. <laughs> Alright. Alright, the walrus is not that bad. This is, oh, that's actually the second transformation in the game. I'm a liar. Crocodile. You oh, liar. No, I'm not gonna lie. Transformations in this game kind of suck. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> they, they, they don't do anything. Like, the crocodile can like chomp, I guess. And play <laughs> one mini and play one mini game. <laughs> one mini game. <laughs> and they can all jump. Oh my god, big deal. Oh, big god. deal. It's all about the bee. The bee's the envy. Oh, I, and I guess the orange too. I mean pumpkin. <laughs> orange can <you> jump. <laughs> like hello. <laughs> like what are you like, like bro? Exactly. Yeah, but we can fly. But even after that, it's not, it's, that, that's it. Because then we can fly. I don't see the big deal. Yeah. It's just a little special, you know? Tiny bit. Perhaps he will, Oliver. Perhaps he will. Oh, Sansa's so doing the left leg strats. Let's go! Uh, epic. Let's go. Getting all those, because it's a convenient time there. Fun fact, uh, obviously, as you saw when Sansa was walking out of 
the hut as just wal the walrus in general. He was walking very slow, but on the sled actually, the walrus moves very fast. The walrus moves as fast as Talon Shot, uh, in like when he's on the sled. Uh, but the interesting is, an interesting thing is, when the sled goes uphill, it actually gains speed. So I mentioned earlier that Talon Shot speed is capped at 700. The walrus's speed when it's going up a slope with the with the sled actually goes above 700, it goes to like 800 or 900, depending on how steep the slope is. But if you jump up a slope in Talon Trot, your speed goes below 700, it goes down to like 600 or something like that. So, sled, Walrus as a sled is actually superior to Talon Trot. So we get as many things as we can with the sled here, and not with Talon Trot. Hopefully with the speed cheese though, because speed cheese is, speed cheese is a speed of 1000, which is really, really fast. So, yeah. Alright, Songshu didn't lose to Boggy Race. Good Let's go. Lost that a couple days ago, but it's not too big deal. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I would never I lose. I would, would never lose the Boggy. Never. <laughs> never. It's all a conspiracy. So used to being second place that you hopped onto the second place podium before you got the Jiggy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oi! Wrong route. Bonk. Gotta get this Mumbo token. Oh, you're getting that Mumbo token? Dang. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because yeah, that, that Mumbo token kind of sucks for two reasons. One, it's literally just a five second token. But two, because the alternative is to walk on the slope that's like just above here. Because we're going to go death rope on this ice cube here. And oh, Wallace, so much health. I, I mentioned that all the transformations are kind of useless, <clears throat> and that's true. But the one thing that they have over a band. Why do you have full health? Right? <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing that they have over uh, Banjo is that the transformations don't slide off like slopes. So you can just climb up any slope indefinitely, <clears throat> whereas Banjo just slides off. So that's a neat little uh, trick that they can do, but yeah. But anyways, we're out of FP. This nice level, pretty quick pace. Now we're heading into MMM. We're going to be using a, a trick called MMM early. I don't think you guys will never know what this trick does. <laughs> it's gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna end MMM early. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I know, right? You would have never have guessed it. But yes, we're gonna enter MMM early. Uh, so the trick found about two years ago, I think, two and a half maybe. Uh, it uses something called a big clip. I can explain big clips somewhat quickly. Uh, basically what it is, it's like the floor in this round is made of triangles. <coughs> uh, yeah, I, it, it, that's a very stupid explanation, but I just say it to trigger one specific runner. <laughs> or, or not runner, but, yeah, you know. Triangles. But, uh, yeah. It's, it's made of very, very small triangles. Uh, and in between some of the triangles, uh, the seams of them are just like, there's, there may be a gap between them just due to like a rounding error in the programming. Uh, so when that happens, there can be a float, uh, float point perfect clip. Uh, and basically, that's very precise. So, right now I mentioned that, uh, I mentioned the Kazooie and Talon Trot runs at a speed of 700. That's 700 units per second. That's the speed we use. So 700 units in one second. That's how fast you move. Uh, the precision of a bit clip is 0 0.000001 of a unit. That's how precise it is. Wait, I'll, I'll let Slash do a bit of this first. Okay, perfect. So in order to get to that specific movement, we, uh, specific section, we have to do a series of actual perfect movements. So, which means that uh, all our joystick movements have to be in a cardinal direction and they have to be buffered. Which means that we have to hold them at a full point so that we're not like moving them while we're actually in control. Which is why we pause in order to change the direction of our joystick. Uh, right here, we're turning back and forth. Slongs is trying to face a specific angle. Also, Slongs, that person was right. Oh my gosh, I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he's turning here, Banjo's actually turning like in real life. He's turning at a rate of three, three degrees per frame. So we're looking to pause on a specific frame here while he's turning. Uh, we do that a few times just to get a specific angle. And after that, once he finds his angle, he's gonna do what we call a punch cancel. 
Basically, he's going to do a bear punch, so pressing B. But then after one frame of movement, he's pressing A. So he moves the tiniest amount of movement, of movement possible. And that's how we're going to slowly inch our way towards the little precision, the little precise clipping point. We'll see how this goes. I wasn't actually paying attention, but that's right. Okay. Let's go. Two. Oh, there you go. We did it. There you go. The last part about it is a beak bust. You gotta beak bust through because if you don't beak bust through, the game will eject you because you have to go through that. Uh, you have to go through that clipping spot in one frame. So if you're just falling at a normal speed, uh, you'll be like in the middle of the like clipping spot for like a bit and when the game detects that it'll just eject you back up so if we beak bus which is the highest speed in the game the speed of 5000 then you'll pass through that platform in one frame and that's the final movement section of that that little trick there but that was really good you got a first try right the first of two tricks two of those tricks in this category Hopefully we'll see more. Some of or my uh, my gold there was ten minutes, so <laughs> finally got a first try. Epic, epic, solid. All right. MMM is a pretty fun level. Uh, this is a pretty good movement right here. Fun fact. Uh, I actually, I meant, I, I used to mention this a lot because people used to give Shlongsha a lot of oh, shit for nice. just like forgetting how to do optimal stuff even though we all taught him every, <laughs> every single like day. Yeah. <laughs> but then it, it, it was like light teasing, it was also like, like a little annoying, but uh, that specific section right there, um, from leaving the cellar to entering that window, I actually timed it from Shlongsha's PB once, and he saved like about half a second over my PB. Uh, in that specific loading zone at one point. So I was like, damn, that's really fast. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, at one point, yeah. Yes, first try MMM early. Shlongsha is a genius. A god, a genius. He's basically, a genius. Well, basically Albert Einstein. Yes. Alright. If you thought right there, Shlongsha was uh, changed the camera while he was leaving that window. That was just some lag reduction. He was holding R, so the camera faced away from the rest of the level. And then he just like practiced like uh, you know putting the right joystick inputs while the camera's moving in order to in order to you know get it properly. Right there, Shlongsha, uh he pooped an egg before getting that jiggy. And I don't know why, but <laughs> if you do that and you get the jiggy, the token will just transport to you. It will teleport to you. If you land on the flight pad after pooping the jiggy and then take off from the flight pad and get the jiggy while you're taking off, you'll a you'll skip the jiggy jig. And B, the door will also teleport to you, which is interesting. Pretty interesting instead. Indeed. Pretty, pretty interesting. Very, very interesting. Alright. These T's are pieces of garbage. They're very annoying. Shonster actually got really good RNG there. Uh, so sometimes they can be almost impossible to, to avoid. And in the cases where they're almost impossible to avoid, you have to do some very out of the way movement to just to not get hit. And to the point where sometimes it's not even worth. But yeah. Alright, so I'm just doing the pot section here. This pot section is probably like one of the movement most movement heavy games in the run. Because the pots are so finicky and precise for no reason at all. Oh, that was oh, that was almost really good. Almost, almost got good. it. Yeah. These graves are annoying too because Sometimes they can just like be annoying and they just run after you a million years. But yeah. Those are pretty decent pots. Not bad. Not too shabby. Not too shab. Fun fact, that mumbo skull right there, that's the shortest mumbo skull in the entire game. In all mumbo's huts, all of them, uh, if you stand outside and try to jump to the eye in Talon Trot, you can't do that because it's just too high. But that one right there, you can jump into the eye in Talon Trot. For some reason, it's just that much shorter. And I don't know why. Oh, nice. But, yeah. Here's another area where we're spelling Bunky Kazunky. Our favorite game. Gotta learn how to spell for this one. <laughs> yes. This is the hardest learning curve. I know you choose to be in. For sure. So I'll help you pass your spelling bee for sure. Yes. Oops. Indeed. Good old one purple day. ghosts. We'll be at a spelling bee. We'll be in the final round. The word will be Kazooie. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> See, I, I don't know how to spell. 
house. <laughs> I thought I was looking at Gazelle Y. <laughs> I don't know how to spell this. Because <laughs> I got a Gazelle Y.O. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Thumbs is actually really hard because uh, that ghost is very annoying. Uh, sometimes it'll just be in a spot where it's very hard to avoid him, so you want to take damage through the grunty squares, which hit hurts you, but allows you to take a straight line and not have to go around the ghost, which is really nice. And doing that just like, helps you with Aquaman. Right? He's a professional speller, the game is wrong, yes. Exactly. Slongsters is doing the real spelling. I want the spelling bee. Promise. Trust. I oh. missed this jump, though. <laughs> yeah. What you can do there is, uh, you can take that, while that jiggy is bouncing, you can jump with it into the water. Uh, and then if you, and then if you just do that, Banjo will just have the jiggy in his hands, in the water. Uh, and, and until you, like, go out of the water and land on some other platform. If you land on a platform where you can stand, you'll do the jiggy jig. But if you land back in the water, then you'll skip the jiggy jig. So that's what you wanted to attempt to do there. Right here, Slauncher is gonna make it all the way to this uh, church here without the speed shoes. Normally you need the speed shoes, but it's quite difficult to get it without it, but it's possible. You can pause buffer the timer. If you pause, the timer will take a bit of time to like uh, count down because when you pause, the timer like goes off screen and on screen, and while it's going off screen and on screen, it's not actually counting. So that's why it's like delaying itself. Uh, but yeah, it is actually possible to make that timer without speed shoes and without pause buffering, but it's very difficult. I remember I would lose a lot of runs to that, uh, trying to do that. I actually, I lost a couple of runs. Sometimes it's just greedy, but usually you can tell if your movement was good enough. <laughs> How much time does that lose? Every pause is two, uh, is 1.5 seconds. Hmm. So, yeah. But like, yeah. if, if you missed it, how much time would you lose there? Oh, that, that's like, that's like 30 seconds. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Right here, Schlongster is playing the theme to Banjo Kazooie. You can hear, right? It's a. Uh... <laughs> actually, don't know the theme. What is the theme? Alright, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'm just, all I can think about is, <laughs> is uh, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly he's just playing the theme. Exactly. Damn, Montan's a, a legend. Maybe <laughs> sounds weird. Imagine if we had BK with custom music, that'd be sick. That would be epic. Epic. Oh god, this limbo. Alright. Fox was skipping that jiggy because it's a second faster to get that in flight right here. Fun fact, that uh, flight pad right there, if you don't have the move through flight learned, that flight pad is still active and you can still use it. Which is weird. This is Panda because you are Flight of the Bumblebee. Both. Obviously. So Slumster has carefully routed his tokens mid-run to have the perfect amount. He <gasps> enters Mumbo's, Mumbo's hut here, and I'm like, oh, come on, Slumster. <laughs> I feel like every time I like hype you up, you just make some mistake. <laughs> Let's go, Slumster! Oh, oh, make this awesome cycle, and Slumster just misses the eggs, and you have to win another <laughs> never dies. Slumster has no Slumster. <laughs> Slumster died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the last pot there, but we're skipping that because get a jiggy with a the transformation. You also skip the dance, so we're gonna get that later on. Mm -hmm. Here's the last token we're gonna need. Then we're gonna enter Mumba's hut. Oh no! <laughs> I don't um, think that's I don't think that's ever happened before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how I did that. That was funny. Man. <laughs> Rip to a real one, yes. Slongster died suddenly, conveniently an, af an hour after his uh, speed doxathon marathon run. Yeah. I just have nothing to say about it. CJ's as bewildered as be be I don't know what the word is uh, as everyone else. <laughs> CJ is still looking for him in hell to kill him again. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. All right. 
Funny tokens here. Sauce is transforming into the, to the pumpkin or orange or basketball or pineapple. Totally, you know it's that. totally an orange. I'm team pineapple myself, you know. <laughs> Looks like a pineapple to me. A pineapple on pizza, though. Oh, boy. Oh, what the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> I left, for, I left for two minutes. They come back to pineapple on pizza, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, the, it's, the be, it's the best pizza. Oh my gosh, not the end of percent rail. <laughs> oh gosh, no, not that way. <laughs> nice try. Nice, nice diverting the, the conversation. Exactly. Okay. Anyways, on, anyways, on. almost did the. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> but anyways, uh, times two uh, pineapple on pizza. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, Schloss are going inside Lago. So we opened these windows earlier, but we didn't enter them. We just opened them for the pumpkin. For the pumpkin, you know? Pumpkin's a little, needs a little help, you know? We got him, though. If only he had yeah. buff arms to if break these windows. That should be in the next game. That should be in Banjo 2 for the Nintendo 64. I like so how that bot says twitch.tv slash longster 007. <laughs> oh, does it? <laughs> oh my His gosh. Your 7. <laughs> 007. My alter ego. My alter ego. The golden nice speedrunner. But yeah, Schlosser left this one note here just for now. Optimal routing. Schlosser's gonna enter the well in Death Warp. Ideally, you'd be at one health here, but... Uh, right now, actually, it's a little fun fact. Uh, if you have three or more health, then your health counter won't appear on screen. So right now, Schlosser likely has three health. But obviously, if you have two or one health, then it'll, it'll, it'll like, just show on screen. And that's actually kind of significant, because having the health counter on screen, it's not like specifically uh, monitored in any specific part of the run, but having the health counter on screen actually can lag the game. Uh, I've noticed this before, because one time I was hosting a race on Banjo Race, it was a Banjo to be any percent tournament, and it was Crosby versus Haganator. They actually tied to the frame, uh, but what I noticed was that uh, Haganator was at low health, he was at 2 health, and Crosby was at 3 health. So they both ended the game at the same time, but I realized as the, t as the cutscene was playing, uh, Crosby was just like going ahead, he was like gaining time for some reason. So like by the end of the cutscene, Crosby's like game was like 5 seconds ahead of Hags, even though, even though they, they like beat the game at the same frame. It's kind of crazy. So the health counter can make an impact, but not specifically monitored by us. There's not really a specific point in the run where we're like, okay, we need health in order to avoid the lag. We mostly just uh, schedule health in order to like death warp properly and stuff like that. Because usually it's minuscule, usually. Nice gold feather. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, I gotta get all I, got, I can get, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> so we're resetting here after the switch. This reset actually is, it's not actually faster. If you want to, like, Shlosha is going to Gobi's Valley next. If Shlosha were to just be the pumpkin, become the pumpkin, and just walk out and go to Gobi's Valley, it wouldn't be any slower than resetting. Uh, the, the reason why we reset is just to get the Clanker's, uh, Clanker's Lair Jiggy that's, like, on the way. Because uh, otherwise we would have to backtrack in a weird spot. And that saves, like, about 15 seconds compared to getting it later or some other time. Because what people used to do is, um, they used to get this Jiggy that Schlonch is about to get when they go back to open Click Clock Wood. But, uh, they since switched that to get it here instead, and I think it saves 8 seconds. Yeah, it should be 8 seconds around then. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Like, one time I forgot to, uh, I just forgot to, what did I forget to do? I forgot to, what did I forget to do? Oh, yeah, I just forgot to reset. I thought I was doing any percent. And then I just walked out and went all the way there. And then it was sad. No, I didn't forget to reset. I remember. Okay, I, I forgot to open Gobi's Valley. That was it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, because you don't do that in any percent. Or, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I forgot to open Gobi's Valley on the way to Mad Monster Mansion. And I was like, oh, God, I gotta go open it. Because, like, I know because I golded. For, and I was like, why did I gold? So then I. So then I uh, in the moment, I was like, you know what? I'll actually just be the pumpkin and then go back to open Gobi's Valley and then just get the, get the jiggy later. I think that would be less of a detour. Alright, so you're entering Gobi's Valley. Chobi's Pizza. Interesting route. This route is actually mostly the same as FFM, except there's a lot of... Like, there's like 
uh, three or so like differences that are actually interesting and cooler in this route, but harder and slower. <laughs> so we'll see. One thing is we're not getting the speeches right away, uh, obviously because we don't have it learned. But we're also just gonna get these notes in the sand, and we're just gonna walk right through. Uh, because normally you need the waiting boots, or you want to get the waiting boots, but waiting boots are slow. And also in the optimal route, you don't even have waiting boots learned. Uh, in the FFM route, you use speed shoes to get these notes, but we don't have that learned, so we're just gonna get them here. Oh! Damn. <laughs> Fortunate. Oh, Almost, Almost got it. Almost got Gobi Clip. It was yeah, they're, they're hard to do. I once got it, I think in my like, uh, two runs ago. I was like, oh snap! <laughs> it, was oh, snap. it was awesome. Yeah. So normally, actually, if Slauson got Gobi Clip there, he would have just entered Jinxie. But since he didn't, he's taking flight and going through this ring here. And that's actually a nice strategy because now uh, he's setting himself up to potentially uh, uh, get a good good RNG. So like, if the ring spawned by the cactuses right here, he could drop down and just he got another ring there, which would have saved three seconds. But if not, it's no big deal because getting that ring there is just as slow as getting it later on. So it's a nice calculated risk to get some potential time save to make up for it. Fortunately, we didn't get the good RNG, but it's okay. As long as there's that one health here, so you gotta be a little careful, but it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Exactly. Easy peasy. Very easy. Indeed. This room is actually kind of interesting because there's, it's changed a good bit over the years. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of like just small stress in this room. Uh, we used to just get the left note like Shangsha did there, and then go onto the carpet, and then once we get the jiggy, roll down to the note, and get the two notes, and then token. Then we started uh, uh, gold feathering that slapper to get a health to use for later, and then getting the two notes, and then getting the notes. Uh, but then we started actually getting the right note first, so the, the note that Shangsha just got. Then we pooped an egg into the into the guy's mouth, and then we jumped on the carpet before Rose, and that saved like two seconds. Uh, and then we switched the note order at the end as well. This is like a lot of little little optimizations you can make. There's like so many rooms. Yeah, I know. Isn't like it wasn't like Gobi's Mountain like or Gobi's Mountain <laughs> Gobi's Gobi's Valley like the it was like the level that changed like the routes have changed the most right out of any level. Definitely for sure, absolutely. It definitely changed the most for sure. At one point, so there's people probably know this, but like there's this pyramid where you have to like get the speech, you just hit the button, go all the way around the pyramid, uh, and then jump into it, and then you like it's the water thing, right? At one point, people used to take off, they used to hit the button in flight and stay in flight <laughs> without landing, and then fly into the into the water pyramid like that, uh, just just like that. But then it's. If you land, you're just like, your run's dead. You lose like 30 seconds and it's over. Oh my gosh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. It was so bad. And then they're like, that, we don't have to do this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That route lasted like two months. Uh, yeah, hit the button in flight. Like, you can just like hover over it just a tiny bit and then not land and it will activate. And, but then it, it's, it was stupid. That, that route lasted for like a couple months. And then thankfully, Captain Cole, a guy named Captain Cole, found a lot of stuff for this game in Tui. Uh, he found a clip where you can just beep bump into the loading zone uh, instead. So now we don't do that anymore. We don't hit the button. But yeah. Did, did the stream freeze? My stream froze. Oh no. No, oh, I guess I'll just watch the actual stream. <laughs> Well, excuse me, I'm just gonna watch the actual stream. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Anyways. Whoops. Gorsh. <laughs> Gorsh, Mickey. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> oh, no, that's so right. Oh, no. Okay. It's all. It's a lot of health management, too. Yeah. I mean, health management isn't too bad in here. Uh, it, it's annoying, it's kind of specific, but it's a little lenient because. Obviously, we have to learn speed shoes, and like I mentioned earlier, bottles will refill your health when you learn the move. Uh, that's annoying because we want to set up for death or warp. We don't want to be at full health there. Uh, not just that only, but uh, when we get this, the honeycomb in this level, that'll also refill our health. So that's also annoying. Yeah. Uh, 
but it has a pros and con. Pro pros is just that you'll likely not die. The con is that you have to take a million hits before you death warp. But thankfully, we have a little sneaky, cool little strat to, 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 to annihilate Bunky before we die, before we death warp. So honestly, we forgot to move. Oh wait, no, we're doing the move now. I'm stupid. I forget the route. I think we got that before. I don't know why. Die, Bunky. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna beat bust the wall, recoil, land right in front of bottles, get in talent shot while we're learning the move. He's gonna refill our health, and then we're gonna quickly make it into the pyramid before the timer goes out. Just like that. Clean. So fresh and so clean and clean. So fresh okay. and clean. Oops. Nice getting on the snake pot there. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> no. <Okay>. The horn. <laughs> the horn. Alright. Okay, yeah, Gobi's Valley. It's actually kind of interesting. I feel like two levels that people often say are the hardest in this level in this game are Gobi's Valley and Mad Monster Mansion. And they're both actually very hard for very different reasons. Uh, Mad Monster Mansion is like very very easy to make small mistakes, uh, and almost every single run, uh, level, almost every single Mad Monster Mansion you do will have at least one mistake. I don't think anyone's got an actual, an actual perfect Mad Monster Mansion ever. ever. Cause it's so hard to reduce lag and stuff, right? That and just like, it's just, all the positions, the no positions are so weird. It's just a hard level. Hard to uh, set ups and stuff. So it's very easy to just lose like 30 seconds just from doing a, making a bunch of like small mistakes. But then Gobi's Valley, I actually find that it's easy to not make that many small mistakes, but there's a lot of, there's a good amount of tricks and those can lose you a lot of time. So those can easily lose you like 30 seconds. So like right here, Slongster has to... Totally landing here. <laughs> Whoops! you want to go to the flight pad anyways? Do you want to go to the flight pad and just like take flight and do water pyramid clip? Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So like right landing right there, you're not supposed to land right there. You're supposed to, you have to beat, bust, sorry, beat bomb a very specific part of that rock in order to stay in flight. It's the left, it's the top left corner of that rock. And you want to do that, A, so you can skip the jiggy jig, and B, so you can go uh, beak bomb and do this trick that Shlongs is about to do right here uh, to clip into the water pyramid. So, uh, we'll see what he do, if he gets it. Got it. Let's go! This clip itself saves 15 seconds, and then skipping the jiggy jig saves another 5 seconds. So, Landing there typically means that you're gonna lose 20 seconds at least, at least. And not only that, but landing there means that you're gonna have to jump through the sand, which means that you will have to do different health management, which will also lose you time. Health management is something that you always gotta be aware of in this game, which is very annoying. But it's actually kind of nice because uh, there's always, like if you ever are like full health, uh, like midway through the run, mid mid midway through a level, chances are there's something that you can do to lose a health to prepare for the death warp and save time. There's just like always some way to like save time with like extra health. Alright, right here, I didn't mention this earlier, but whenever you enter a loading zone, this and exit, this one ring will spawn over and over and over again. Because normally when you fly through a ring, another one will spawn and that spawn location is RNG. So you just fly through all of them just based off of where it goes. But that one ring spawns there after every loading zone, uh, and it doesn't actually go out of the ground until you, until it's on camera. So Schlongster right there carefully made sure his camera was not facing towards the ring, and then he jumped onto the spot where it spawned, and then when it became on camera, he was already on top of it while it was raising, so he didn't have to fly through it or do any funky jumps. Right here, Schlongster's just cheating, disrespecting the game, <laughs> cheating my video game. Oh, uh, white people named Sandy Butt. Can't believe it, the nerve, man. This is this is unacceptable. I am telling my uncle he works at Nintendo. You will be banned from Nintendo. I work so hard to make this maze. I can't believe it, man. <laughs> All the hours put into that. <laughs> just gone. I missed my son's birthday party to make that maze. <laughs> I'm making the maze. You just skip it. How dare you, the nerve, man? The nerve. <laughs> All right. Well. Right here, Slongs, that was, you, you got your, all your jiggies, right? Uh, I'm sorry, all your rings, right? Oh my what? The rings, the ancient ones? The, yeah, the, you, the yeah, I got, yeah, I got all the rings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So normally if you don't get, uh, 
if you don't do the ring that Shlonsha did when he failed Goby Clip, you get the last ring here, which is pretty slow, because it's out of the way. But now Shlonsha can go straight here. He's actually going to do an interesting glitch here. Nice. Right now he's one less than full health. He's letting the Slappa touch the ground. He's just going to hop right into Slappa, and Slappa just took three hits of damage, just like that. Uh, I have no idea why it happens, but if Slap is just on the ground and you hop right into the middle of him, he'll uh, you'll, you'll just get annihilated for some reason. You can take up to six damage like that. It's actually kind of funny because uh, I, I learned this from a guy named Univin, who's actually like one of the, the pioneers for this category, the renaissance of this category. Uh, and what he told me was like, he was like, oh yeah, I learned this because I saw this one streamer named No uh, I actually heard them, but I don't know who that person is, but. We were playing uh, Banjo one time, and he accidentally did that strat, and he just died and had to collect all the notes again, and it was really funny. <laughs> oh, hey, the stream's back. I can see. Oh. Right here, Slong's just about to do Grabba, finally. The last... last. Oh, no! <laughs> oh. I do missed you know it. Do you know the slope of beast or no? I... forgot. <laughs> That's okay. Oh... Uh... Gonna get back that um, fly pad real quick. <laughs> Redo. Uh, you can just go to the bottom line the moat. <laughs> oh wait, the on the moat? Or is Not it yet. is it filled already though? Oh yeah, true. Look, yeah, then the, yeah, I guess. The the normal backup is a uh, to what's it called? Get the speed shoes because the route after that is typically to beak bomb to the speed shoes, get the notes on the water pyramid. And then get the notes in the sand around Grabba, and then go to Gobi. Uh, if you fail it there, then you can just like get the speed shoes, get the notes around Grabba. First try. Uh, and then like do Grabba with speed shoes the intended way. But it's it's, it's a little annoying. At least here, you can see the routes. Real quick, we have an $8 donation from Anonymous that says slap, 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 clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Oh, heck yeah. I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Clap, slap, slap. Clap, clap, clap. My name is Boogie. <laughs> Boogie. Right here, Slosh is being an epic gamer and getting all these notes with the speed shoes in the sand. First try, easy peasy. Look at the speed. The speed. Oh, it's too good. The speed the demon. Thing. Speed demon, hell yeah. And we're done with Gibby's. Gibby's Valley. Mm hmm. Down, time for Rusty Bucket Bay. Oh, that's low. Uh, I, was, I was literally just thinking, oh, what, what level is next? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Quick Clock what? Yeah, yeah, it's that level. Oh, yeah, that level. Yeah. Oh, no. Rusty Bucket's pretty fun. I kind of like it, but what the hell? Right. Uh, oh yeah, it's pretty straightforward. What we're just gonna do for the next like a minute, we're just gonna go open Rusty Bucket, then enter Rusty Bucket. A lot of this route is actually really easy to just know, because if you know the game, the route is very intuitive. Uh, you know exactly why things are routed the way they are. For, like BGS, for example. We go back to FP after Click Clock Wood, actually, and you'll see it'll be very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Okay, yeah. Here we avoid this chump. This is his name. I'm not insulting him. It's just his name. I'm not a bully, I swear. His name is Chump. Sonsha, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Just gonna get off that real quick. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. Didn't like that pull. Bad pull. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All my homies hate that pull. Exactly. Oh, All my homies. Yeah. Exactly. Never speak to me or my son again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tragic backstory. It's gonna be ten episodes long. <laughs> yes, this should make Man, it it's like a One Piece arc. You get to the bad guy, and then Oda spends thirty weeks telling you its backstory. Oh, we got someone that loves One Piece. Let's go! Uh, As he's actually just uh, restarted, um, rewatching that. I just started it after so much, so many years of peer pressure. I started it. <laughs> Where are so you now? 
episode 85 out of you should over <laughs> look up one pace one pace oh i've heard about about that it's like it they cuts are out of... yeah they cut down a lot to the parts yeah. and stuff that you need they don't do every arc but like okay. for example my friend got to skypea and was like uh and i'm like trust me you don't have to watch 200 episodes of skypea <laughs> Just okay. watch One Piece. Yeah. Okay. One Piece, yeah. yeah, I heard is really good. The only that. arc that I would say watch in its entirety, because I really liked the entire thing, was uh, Water 7. Oh, yeah, for sure. I loved Water 7 in Annie's Lobby, and I wouldn't recommend watching a parsed down version of it, even though there's entire oh, plot lines that don't matter at all. Oh, okay. Like the damn uh, giant eels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They give the eels a backstory. Wait, what? <laughs> you know oh my! That? I do not remember that. You don't know what I'm talking about, though, right? <laughs> sort of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny it, as hell. There's an episode where they just speak in not intelligible. Time, time skip, yeah. It's like, yeah, why do we need to know this? <laughs> this is the will of the eels. <laughs> It's so funny. I have noticed that there's a lot, a lot of backstory. Yeah. Wow, no. Got a backstory Everybody for the bag of backstory. chips. Everybody. Yeah. A main character just got like an entire arc for character development like two years ago. I guess it was six years ago now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whole, whole cake was when I started at my current job, and that was seven years ago. Oh damn. Yeah, it's 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 taking a lot. <laughs> Oh my god, so this is a lot of suspense. I got I got to do it for the, you know, for the um, for the suspense, you know. Got to get got to put some excitement in there. Will he get engine room? <laughs> really get it. Yes. That, that one piece discussion right there was perfectly timely calculated in order to take away the 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 stressfulness of of engine room for Slongster. Uh, exactly. That means that he didn't die. I mean, he made through easily. So, you're Perfect. Right. Good job, good job. Oh my yeah, gosh. The engine is pretty kind of difficult. The only difficult part is just the fan clips. The fan clips are a little rough just because you gotta you gotta take a damage into it, then you gotta roll it towards the fan, and then use your iframes to just jump past it. But if your line's not straight, if you're not holding straight up, if you don't roll long enough, if you roll too late, uh, you just get hit by the fan again. And if your angle wasn't good, then you'll just get knocked off, which is rough. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that window is a. Uh, there's that window is there's a gap there. I'll 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 t I'll give you a tutorial in the chat. This is what the window and the wall looks like. You go between the gap. There's your tutorial. <laughs> that that that's that's how the mechanics of the that in that that super detailed intricate glitch works. That's just what the wall and the <laughs> the window looks like. Man. I hear Sasha slip using the end. These, these slow pieces are actually very, very useful because if they weren't a thing, then uh, we'd have to use the tolls, watch a cutscene, and lose like eight eggs there. To, <laughs> yeah. Rough. We don't want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, so I think that there, there's. Fun fact, there's like a, I think there's like some of it a misconception. So people say that on 1.1, slope, slope glitch doesn't work. But that's actually not true. The only place it oh, wow. doesn't work is in Tigger's Tower in version 1.1 of this game. Oh gosh, long time. I've never, I've actually <laughs> never done that before. I've done that before, dude. Oh, I was like, I don't know. Nah, I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. It's yeah, slope rough. glitch. Uh, it works on NTSC 1.0 uh, in Tigger's Tower. Uh, but not in 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, and that loses about 50 seconds because you have to become the ant, the termite, and then you have to get some five extra tokens because of it. Uh, but the glitch does work in everywhere, everywhere else in 1.1, 1. 1, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. This, this part is pretty cool. Don't have to fight the yeah. whole boss here. Yeah, you're just hitting him before you reach the cutscene, so he, he, so he reacts to it. Then he doesn't have time to because then, like since he reacts to it, he's already built, and you can skip the cutscene of him being built. So you can yeah, that's a good little cutscene skip. But yeah. Hi. 
Right. Sasha is also, like, if you notice, like, a lot of these places, Sasha is, like, pooping an egg to break these windows. It's actually a lot, a little faster for each window. It's about 0.3 seconds faster, uh, pooping each, uh, an egg on each window compared to just pecking it to break it. it loses an egg, but oh, wait, if you're what? managing it correctly, then it's, it'll, it'll work out, uh, in your favor, for sure. Sasha, you forgot the box. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, I forgot the ASME room. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, that's a, it's a dead meme. <laughs> we don't and talk about it. Once. We don't, we don't talk about it. <laughs> you don't talk about that box. Yeah. You don't talk about it. Oh! I missed the mumbo token. <laughs> Not the mumbo token. You can just get a different one. Oh yeah, true. Oh yeah, we can get the one on top of the mast. That one's, uh, or in top of the, in front of the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, do you usually skip that one token in the first pipe in this level? Uh, the first pipe? What do you mean? Yeah. Which one? You know how to oh, you actually it. don't! Oh! Oh, I totally forgot. <laughs> so yeah. there's, there's two tokens I gotta get. Yeah, don't worry, the other one's easy to get. The good thing about it is, I mentioned earlier, we're after the pumpkin, which means the tokens are very lenient, they're very fast, which means there's also a lot of backup tokens. Mm -hmm. So, even though Schlongster missed two tokens already, he's <laughs> only gonna lose, like, three seconds by getting two backups. Yep. One backup is gonna be the one in front of the ship, we'll mention that later. The other backup will be the leaf in summer. Uh... Uh, just like backflipping up there. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what one you mean. Yeah. And both of those combined is just like three seconds or something. Basically nothing. Only a slap on the wrist. However, if he did that, if he missed two tokens in the early game, there would be almost no place to get a backup token. Almost no place. Yeah. In fact, I don't know if I would even know where to get a backup token. There's like one in MMM that loses eight seconds by the fountain. And like, yeah, it's like nothing. <laughs> nice lifeboat jump. Let's, Let's go. Slongs are doing the cool guy strat there. That strat that saves like four seconds. Just uh, hopping to that lifeboat with a semi precise jump and peck. Wait a second, I get this? No. <laughs> Wait a sec. You do get this token, yes. Wait, what do you oh, call it? No. Okay, for, <laughs> some, for some reason I feel like I didn't get that note for a second. I was <laughs> like, oh god. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Double check, double check. It's okay. We're gonna get to the end. We're gonna have like 950 now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know you could yeah. get that many. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. It's fine. Ooh, okay. This section is a little weird. What you have to do this or you have to break the break the uh, door. You have to peck the grill chompa. Then while you're doing that peck, you have to turn around and also kill the grub one. That was an epic jump. See right there, Slauncher has accurate, very fast reflexes to get that jump super fast, super fast, super quickly, precise joystick movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually somewhat easy. All you have to do is just like hold straight right. And yeah. That gives you the perfect opportunity. So hard. So, so difficult, yes. Mm -hmm. The hardest trick in the game, to be honest. Quite, yes, indeed. Oh, this code, dude, this great code. Oh, fun fact. Uh, wait, wait, uh, wait. people used to do like a, a song. Don't worry. <laughs> you have to start over. I was like, wait, does it keep on going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Uh, Oh my like, god, Gunner, why didn't you tell us that earlier, man? You could have saved us. Oh, I didn't you even go to two. two. This code is a bunch of poopy. <laughs> it is just straight right there, so yeah. <laughs> it's RNG. We don't know what the code is, we just guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we forgot that yeah, note. Fun fact, uh, people used to do damage to the game, this game. And I used to never, di I never did it, because I didn't really like it. But, uh... I did it once, one stream, and I got all the way through to RVB damage list, and I was actually on a really good pace. I was like, actually still in like 206 pace uh, for whole run damage list. That was hilarious. That was great. And then I was like, oh, okay. I was like asking someone in my chat, or, like, am I allowed to save and quit at the end of this level? Am I allowed to do this in Click Clock Wood when I get there? And I'm like, oh, I guess never mind. I'm, it's over. I just hit the, <laughs> just hit the wrong thing. <laughs> Unfortunate. Oh, man. 23 was number one. Yeah, yeah. That, no, that's the next game, Ninja 2. That's in Jiggies of Time. No. Oh, totally. Oh, Alright. 
Sasha is about to finish the level here. He's only got a four more notes inside of this anchor room. He's gonna free the dolphin, Snorkel, and then he's gonna hopefully not destroy Snorkel because the anchor anchor kind of just like rips right through him. But yeah. <laughs> As, as long as as long as we get our jiggy, we don't care. Hopefully, guts don't be right. flying out, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. No this section is a little scary, though. You just walk straight forward, and it works like 99.9% of the time. There's only 1% of the by chomping. It's very annoying, and it is gonna be your fault. There's like, it is consistent, but like sometimes you just might like spaz out on your joystick. Yeah. <laughs> and just, like, flip the fuck in a weird direction. You just get hit. Yeah. It is consistent for the most part. Yeah. On the way back as well. Kind of wondering how I didn't get hit there. <laughs> it was like I was like a little moving my stick a little bit. <laughs> yeah. A little weird. A little funky. Funky wonky. All right. Last yeah, we're gonna get, level. Let's get this, uh, we're gonna skip this jiggy jig. Not that one. The next one. The same exact same way that we did it in Mumbo's Mountain. Uh, we're gonna grab the Jinjo, jump off. We're only gonna actually peck Smacker here. Oh wow, whoops. <laughs> well, oh. I missed it. <laughs> That's super easy. <laughs> it's okay, you got it in Mumbo's Mountain. That's actually the, this one right here is the easier one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is, in case you don't know, this is the full dance. You only see it once in the run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, what you wanted to do there was peck Snacker to go onto the buoy. And you only want to peck Snacker just so it goes away. And then you want to jump off the buoy and then jump onto it when it's facing down from the water to the jiggy without touching the ground. And like I mentioned earlier, the, the game will like assume you're still in the water. So yeah, you'll just skip the jiggy jig. Are you going to beak bomb? Beak bomb the, G the honeycomb? No, don't do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so to do it? Oh, wait, whoops. Oh, crap. I actually messed up. I need to get I need to get hit by this guy. <laughs> Not supposed to kill that guy yet. Wait, where are you going? Okay. I thought you were going to the girl chomp and I was like, wait, uh, that guy takes two. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I'm gonna die then. <laughs> Alright. It's fine. Alright, final jiggy and then we just death warp. And that's Rusty Bucket Bay. I used to I used to get in talent shot and go into like little <laughs> loading pad and I'm like wait I don't have I'm I'm swimming after this. <laughs> That's just talent shot when you're in the water. Yes yes yes. Mm -hmm. All right all right we're coming to the great trick of the game. Click clock would early the the run the the place where all runs go to die. Yeah. It's very very sad very triggering. Out of all my like uh, speed runs I feel like I, I've gotten. Little rage and speedruns, right? Like, like I, I, this was like the one point where I actually just like lost it once, because like I got to, I got to click clock out early, three times in a row, on like low 157 pace. And every single time, I, I just, I got a lag frame, and it just like I couldn't do it, and it just, I just lost my run, and I was like, bro, I'm losing, like hours of my life just because I can't get this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lag frames suck. Yep. It's very consistent, except there's just like a very small chance that you get a lag frame on the way to the spot. So right here, we're gonna hit this button. Normally, that's what you use to enter it, or to, to open the level. But we're only hitting it so it spawns us at a consistent spotting position. We're gonna get a series of perfect movements with the bear punches, uh, beat charges. We're gonna kill this guy because he's gonna get in the way. We actually want to make sure we get into talent shot before that honeycomb lands, because if you get that honeycomb, it could cause a lag frame. And if you get a lag frame, it'll change the amount of movement that you do, like in a frame. Ooh, setup. Is that setup C? Yeah, it's setup C. Okay, I don't know. It can be. Oh okay. well, it's not. It's, it's not. setup setup C point two, but I should probably still get the C point five. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it looked a bit off, yeah. I'm not sure you get the extra life. Yeah, so it, looked, was, uh, it looked like setup C for a second though. Yeah, yeah. So that that was a, that was a case of one of the frames, the lag frames there. It's very very sad. Well, it's either that or or uh, a wrong joystick movement, one or the other. But yeah. There's a chance that like you do everything perfectly up until that specific point, uh, and then the game just gives you a lag frame, and we don't know why, but. It just ruins everything, and you have to just die, like Sean's doing now. <gasps> that was so sad. close. 
Yeah. But after that point, if you get that right, then it's 100% consistent. Again, going under this honeycomb. So if you don't collect, if you collect it, then it'll, it might cause a lag frame. Let's see, what setup is he gonna get? I think that's setup C this time. <laughs> Oh, it's not set. It's what? Oh yeah. Huh? The, yeah. Basically, the way we are—it's not. It's very easy to tell. Actually, we're just looking at like what frame we're pausing on. Because when you, we're looking to pause on a very specific frame, I actually didn't mention this earlier, but uh, right here, tile traps are our best form of movement, fastest form of movement, but it's not consistent. So we, what we're trying to do here is we're gonna get into talent trap. While we're getting to talent shot, we're uh, buffering our joystick input so it's reaching a full cardinal direction by the time we're able to move, which means that there's no human error there that can possibly mess it up. And then we're going to continue moving in that direction, and then we're going to pause in a specific frame uh, that's close to the shock pad there so we can get on top of Click Clockwood. Uh, and it's a frame perfect pause, but it's very hard, hard obviously, because it's a frame perfect pause. Oh, you may have heard too it early. E, setup A. Oh yeah, that's early. Uh, but what we're, we're doing here is that we actually made three different setups, set up A, B, and C. So there's a three frame window that you can pause in Talent Shot. And if you pause in like any of those frames, you can get it. You can get the trick. But the only downside is you have to memorize so many more things. So like in this, in, in uh, I can just say it right now. It's so like in Click Clock Early, after you go, go up the shock pad, you have to memorize how many punch cancels to do. But, you have to you have to do you have to maybe do a punch cancel maybe not you have to do a twirly in a specific direction memorize the pause frame uh, of what it looks like maybe do a beak barge maybe do another punch cancel maybe do three punch cancels then you have to do another twirly memorize that frame of the pause screen then do another punch cancel maybe or maybe do three who knows and then you get in talent shot do another twirly memorize the frame and then do a couple more punch cancels uh, they can vary between one to three and then you'll finally get in the level. And that's a lot to memorize. And that's just for one setup. And you have to memorize three versions of that. So it takes a lot, a lot of practice. Alright, Slosh got set up B, so he's paused on the second frame. Possibly. Hmm. That looked a bit weird, but I'm just gonna assume that the cropping's off. Uh, that look good, okay. Let's see. Come on. Almost, we got this. That was a frame. Oh, there we go. Got it. Yeah, yeah there it is, okay. Slums are failing the choice to let ass. <laughs> now you're gonna do slums for like that, man. <laughs> Damn, first try of twirly there. Nice. Like to see it. Two, two, three. Okay, those three punch cancels. Yeah. Almost got mixed yep. up with what, uh. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. One frame early. There we go. And the two punch cancels. Let's go. Finally. One. Hey, we golden. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Alright. You got it. GG. That's the hardest trick. One of the hardest tricks in the game. Thank so God. Two big clips in this run. Oh, actually, there's going to be a third one, actually. I'm a liar. In fall. You're doing that, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'll be doing uh, the advanced one. The most overall, advanced one, yeah. Yes, yeah, so overall in this game, there's only there's four useful big clips for all categories. There's obviously like way more places you can clip, way more possible cl clip points, but there's only like four that are useful to RTA runs for like all this category, all these categories. One of them is MMM early. One of them is Click Clock Wood early. Those are just the two that you've seen. The third is Fall big clip, which is what we're gonna see later on in fall. And the fourth is BGS early, which is only used in any percent. Uh, and that was the hardest of all of them all. Not because of the actual big clip, but because afterwards you have to do a lot of funky movement out of bounds and underwater, which is weird. Okay, maybe one day you'll see that. Someday. But yeah, those clips are very, very hard, very rare, very like detailed. You have to learn a lot about it. I actually 
if, if anyone's interested and wants to read more about it, I wrote an entire essay <laughs> on uh, this website, bandospeedruns.com slash bk slash clips. It took me a good while, but it, it has like an explanation of like why the clips work, how they work, why they were found, how they were found, how we find setups, which is basically with the computers uh, systematically trying a million setups to just brute force, uh, you know, a setup that works. Uh, it also has all the coordinates of every single step, and as I mentioned before, each coordinate has to be precise to the 0 0.000001 of a unit. So it's a lot of a lot of numbers, you know. But, you know, they are consistent. I have a funny story for you. Yo. So um, we were working on the video that yeah. me and you worked on. Okay. And I remember uh, somebody at some point linked me the banjo wiki. <laughs> and I was they were like, yeah, use this. Every, I just took a quick look at it. Everything looks good. And I saw so I wrote a bunch of stuff in my in the script based on that. And then people started reading it. Oh, like, no. This isn't how any of it works. Where the hell did you get this? I was like, did you told me to read the rick the wiki. Oh, who told you to read the wiki? The wiki the wiki's not right. <laughs> Everyone knows the wiki is wrong. <laughs> oh my god, that's so sad. Yeah, that, that like scuffed banjo wiki that like no speedrunners ever touched at all. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah fun, that was fun. <laughs> that was a fun time. Good time, good times. And now we have now we have a, a man-made website, which has all the information, but yeah, it's okay. All right, there, Slongster did uh, did two tricks. He won. Uh, he was able to move during that cutscene while he while his flower spawning. You just get hit during the cutscene, uh, or you just like get canceled by an animation during the cutscene. You can start moving. Uh, that was one place where he did it. The other place where he did it was back in BGS during Tip Top. Trust me, you can't do that for us. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, that's not right. This isn't spring. <laughs> this season. <laughs> so how it works. Yeah. You're not supposed to do it like that. Yeah. But yeah, that's what happens uh, uh, if you get hit or if you like just get cancelled out of an animation. During a cutscene, you can start moving. He used it there in Spring 1 and in BGS, and we'll actually use it one time later for another, another glitch. We'll see later on. But yeah. CCW is actually not. Uh, it's it's pretty. It's kind of difficult, but it's kind of not difficult. It's like I personally find it's easy to not make too many small mistakes. Uh, if you fall, obviously that's just 40 seconds. But it's too, thankfully it's not too difficult to not fall. Ooh, no gold feathers, unfortunate. I'm like wondering what. I'm usually at 10 gold feathers there. <laughs> it's because you died to the to quick lock early and didn't restock there. Oh, that's right. I yeah, forgot about that. that. Yeah. But yeah, the click lock would really the, the route is practically just climb up the tree in every season, except in winter you fly up the tree and then you climb down. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically the route for click lock wood all the seasons. Uh here we just have to go get Gobi because we just need him to feed the water, feed feed the flower. Then we're gonna climb up the leaves afterwards, get these worms along the way just for for Irie. Good old Irie. Best yeah. bird in the game. Yeah. Better than Kazooie. Kazooie's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have had Irie on top of our back, to be honest. Yeah. Imagine if Irie would just, like, fly with us. We would be able to beat Grunty so easily, dude. Dude, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, this rock has had... This rock is very annoying because it's had so many changes over the past few years, but there's so limited options on how you can break it. You can break that rock with a gold feather, with a beak bust, with a beak barge. At the very beginning, people started to beak barge. And then, uh, later on, people start to beak bust the rock. Because uh, they're like, oh, look, I can beak bust this, and I can cancel the beak bust animation, so it must be faster. Uh, but then people start to gold feather and realize, oh, this is even faster. But the gold feather was like, it's obviously faster, but you won't always have a gold feather. So sometimes you'll have to beak bust. But then later on, I went back and timed it and I was like, oh, you know what? The beak bar is faster than beak busting. So why were we doing this the whole time? Why did we change? <laughs> people just like, we just like, oh, yep, that was faster to me. And never timed a single thing. Can't believe it. Joking. I know. And that's like, you know, 
If, if any, if anyone's like a speedrunner, just like, just, 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 just time things. There's, you'd be surprised at how many people just assume things are faster. <laughs> There's so many things that you can just like time simple things, and they'll take like two seconds. Yeah. It's also going around. If you just uh, shoot an egg there behind the thing, you can extend your hitbox. Exactly. You so, can go through walls if you just shoot eggs. Yeah. Right there, if you go behind the. Uh, what are the snare bear? Snare bear's eyes. Uh, you can just like knock a hit. You'll be invulnerable. One feather now, eh? Interesting. Interesting. Fairly interesting. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so close. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, that, that was so sick. Oh my gosh. Already. That was epic. Yeah, easier things are faster too. It's like, and, and it's like, you can't really blame people that much because like, at the, be at the at some point you can't like time everything. You can't time the entire route, right? So like, at some point you have to, at some level you have to assume. But there's a certain level of like minuscule routing choices where you gotta time it. Otherwise, it's just like you don't know what you're doing. I don't trust anyone who says, "Oh, I've I've been timed it, but I think this is faster." <laughs> As he's like, I'm tired. I'm timing everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like. You can give me like the world record holder of any game, and if they tell me, oh, like, this is faster. I haven't timed it, but it's faster. I, I won't believe it. I, I, I would not believe it one second. <laughs> yeah. They, they could be right, but I just, I just wouldn't believe it. Now I'm starting out to believe some stuff because some like a bunch of stuff is like, oh wait, that's actually not faster, and I'm like, ah, I it's, trusted you. <laughs> it's been betrayed too many times, you know. Can't, 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 can't take that. Yeah. A lot of simple things. Oh, yeah. Alright. Fall route. Fall route has actually been changed massively recently. So, because of the bit fall bit clip that we added, um, we're now doing the same route that the task does for fall. Just slower, because we're not task, but you know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're doing the same route that Tass does, and we're gonna void out at the very end. We'll, we'll see this. But it's a very funky route. It's kind of neat. So, so, do me a favor when you go up the second leaf pile. I noticed you didn't do this before. Hug the wall. Hug oh, the wall. Hu oh, hug the wall, okay. Yeah, yeah. When you go up the second leaf pile. Up the second, okay. Yeah, and just hold A. Yeah. Oh, yeah! They oh, that was so sick. Okay. Yeah. Look how fast you go up there. So fast. So you basically it's a fly. Really weird mechanic, but if you just hug the wall during like an uphill slope, some specific uphill slopes work better than others. You just like get an insane speed boost, and then you just like go up as fast as possible. It's actually kind of crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember. Um, uh, what's yep. up? Go ahead. Oh, I said I just remember. I remember someone teaching me that before a long time ago, and I was just like, "Holy crap, dude! That's insane!" <laughs> Like, it was like the coolest trick in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, very neat. And it works even better on that one. Uh, on that leaf pile there. Just because of how it is. But yeah. Uh, right here, Sloth is going to get this Jiggy here, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually optimal to get this Jiggy in winter in flight, but it's kind of scary because you might land, and you don't want to land in flight uh, in winter. Otherwise, you have to walk all the way out. I'm it's going to get it out. It loses uh, seven seconds from my timings from before, but yeah, it's not that big of a deal. But if you Basically, land, I, I I didn't get that jiggy in flight until like after I got sub two, so it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> it's definitely like there's so many different tricks and uh, strats in this game, just like on a small scale, range ranges between like 0 0.2 seconds to like five seconds strats, and. You really gotta like be picky and choosy about them. Uh, at some point, ideally, you'd want to do them all, uh, but like you really want to just be careful and know know your limits, know your skill level, and just know what strats have what risks. And yeah, just like understand the balance between them, right? Because like if you are doing a two-second time save strat that's very risky, that can lose you like 30 seconds, then it might not be worth it if you don't actually need it for the goal for your goal time, right? Depends what your goal is too, I guess. But yeah. there's a lot of a lot of those kinds of time saves too. Because coming up right here, Slong's just gonna do this acorn section. Oh, nice, uh, nice backflip. 
<laughs> you can't backflip those. It's just a bit too high, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For style points. Style points, yes. Yeah, this this acorn section here. Um, I've optimized it to like. You can save like, like if, uh, a couple years ago, the optimal way people were doing it, it was like okay, but I've optimized it since then to save about up to like three seconds, and it's really really fast now. But it's so dangerous and risky that if you can just fall at any moment, and you'll just like lose forty seconds. But it's something that is consistent, and if you want to do it, if you think you need the time save for your goal time, uh then it's something where you really have to like make sure you know the consistency of and know how to do consistently. Slash is gonna just do it the the easier way here, slightly easier way, safer way, just to make sure you didn't fall. You won't fall, right? You won't fall. Okay, you Hopefully fall. not. <laughs> right. We good, we good. We good, we're good. This is a solid click clock wood. Solid. Oops. Give me the swarm. Nice. Oh no, the worm. The worm. <laughs> Gotta feed the worm it. The are the worst, dude. Yeah. yeah. Gotta so feed bad. it. Even worse. Even worse than notes. <laughs> oh, give him. Yes, it. way worse. Hundred percent. Thousand percent. So bad. It's like it's like it's the it's a, it's deep inside is where the hitbox is, yeah, <laughs> not the actual yeah, acorn. Yeah. You get a feeling for the, the worm hitboxes. Basically, you just have to go straight into the middle of the worm. You can't touch his face or his tail. Just the, basically the middle of it, and I'll get it. To you, get it. Get you it most of the time. Right here, Slosh is also doing some neat slope of use methods to wait out these birds. Yeah. It looks scary, but that's actually the safest way to do that. Mm -hmm. If you just wait for the birds to peck out and then uh, and then stand on this platform, it's going to peck again while you're waiting for the next one. So you'll die. If you just try to kill them all, some of them move faster than others and they come out at different speeds because of RNG and lag. So that's inconsistent innately and you might just get hit and fall off. But that way, you have like a full second to wait on the platform. Uh, so if you wait that full second uh, on the slope before you slide off. So if you wait that full second and you jump right before you do a neutral jump right before you like slide off, you have like so much time to wait before the before, before the bird to go back in, right? So yeah. You just do that so yeah. So here we're feeding Eerie, Irie, uh, right before the last time we're feeding him. My good old friend Eerie. Okay. This is the, I think this is the longest downtime in the game. It might be this or Twinkies. Fitness challenge for just that, let's go! Yes, getting 900 jumping jacks right there. Right here we're getting this token, and we're gonna go into Mumbo's. Oh, you actually have extra tokens. Interesting. Oh, nice. So I don't. I can get the one in winter and I have to worry about the other one in spring. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So right here, I'm gonna be quiet a bit because we use an audio cue for this. Wait, I don't even. Wait, where am I? Oh. <laughs> if Mumbo's hut was on fire, Slongster would be dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> Alright, so this big clip is actually the easiest one. Oh, messed it up. <laughs> He messed it up. Sorry, <laughs> I, I should have said that afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Easy as big clip. <laughs> oh, I have to be quiet again. There we go. So, this is the easiest one in the game. Uh, it only takes five seconds to do this big clip along with the, with the route associated with it. Uh, which is kind of rough because that means that you have to do the inputs as fast as possible But the issue is so I didn't mention this earlier, but some of our forms of movements in this game Include like uh, for four big clips for like a perfect movements or, like bear punches You just tap B and you move to fix fixed amount like a distance every time or beak barges And you move to fixed amount every time but, like after you do a beak barge or after you do a bear punch and the animation stops and you have control again Banjo doesn't actually stop moving on a micro level until like a second or so after and we have a visual cue for it however uh if you hold z after a beak barge or a burp or a bear punch banjo will keep moving a minuscule amount and you can't tell uh ooh, this is about oh, this is I, was trying, I was trying to roll there but <laughs> luckily I, I stayed in flight <laughs> or yeah. that's epic yeah, he'll move in a minuscule amount and you can't tell but you also can't tell when he stops moving 
uh, and that's rough because if you don't if you don't know when he stops moving, then you don't know when you can optimally start the next movement, right? So that's rough because the we we use those sliding techniques where we hold Z after bear punches and beak bar beak barges for the fall big clip. Uh, but we don't know when to do the next move, and it saves a little time in the first place that we may as well just like not do it. So what we do there specifically is the audio, the music, it resets every time you enter and exit a loading zone. So if you beak barge right away and then do the next input according to a specific note in the music, then that's like how we optimally do that big clip. That's how we make sure that we save the most amount of time with that. I don't know if that was understandable, because I kind of just like kept talking, but... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm to do that. It's a good explainer. Anyways, here, as I mentioned before, winter was just flying up. Songster has seven feathers left, but it's not too bad because we only need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah, that's actually we have only we only, we only need like five or six feathers left, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> oh god, it's okay. But it's okay, yeah, we can get some uh, feathers here, it's luckily. Yeah, get some in Naughty's house for sure. I think I, I went... Oh, minutes. it's because, um... It's because I also had to... Whatchamacallit? Had to... Or do, uh... Remember, I had to refly for a water pyramid clip. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's, <laughs> that's why. Yeah. But it was worth it! Worth it. Alright, yeah. So... This, now he's just gonna do a backup and just enter Nabna's house for some feathers. And this is definitely worth doing because these clips that he's about to do in flight, they actually save a significant amount of time. Oops. At least like a minute, both of them combined. Mm -hmm. So, he's gonna make sure to get these feathers and then he's gonna start doing his neat little clips here. Beak Bomb is just super broken in this game because uh, it moves very fast. It's the second fastest movement in the game, next to just Beak Busting. Beak busting is at a speed of 5,000. Uh, oh wait, uh, and wait, what is this called? Beak bomb. That's it. Beak bomb is at a speed of 4,000, and and it, it's really really helpful because um, I mentioned earlier we need to beak bust for like big clips, right? Because we need to beak bust so we pass through the floor. No! In one frame. It's okay. Oh damn, unfortunate. So we need to pass through the floor in one frame, right? Uh, and that's possible with the beak bust because the beak bust moves so fast. Same thing goes with the with the beak bomb. If you beak bomb at a specific spot on the ground, you can pass through the frame, uh, pass through the floor in one frame. So if you were to like record this, open it in a video editor, and like go frame by frame, on one frame you'll see Banjo above the ground. On the next frame you'll see him be completely below the ground. You'll never see a frame where Banjo is in between. Uh, like the the above the ground, like like in the middle of the ground, basically. You'll never see that frame. If you do see that frame somehow, then then you're gonna fail the trick, <laughs> basically. So that's why it's like a very precise spot you have to face because it's just like somewhat mathematics as well. Because like you want to make sure you're facing your camera's facing at a straight angle, so all of your speed is moving in one direction instead of being split into like an x and y direction. Uh, in order to like optimize how fast you're moving in which direction, does that make sense? And yeah, it's a lot of very annoying setup and trial and error to, to learn how to do, but you know. Right now, Slash is gonna come up on, on a trick called Soft Lock. I'm gonna be a quiet in a bit because he has to listen for this. He's gonna get hit by the bees again and then move during the cutscene, like we mentioned before. And he's gonna make his way to Mumba's hut. But, I gotta be quiet. Nice. Epic. Alright. So, you're not supposed to poop eggs into the spring flower two times. You're only supposed to do that once. Uh, and it freezes because, like, it does, there's no animation to spawn the jiggy. So it just, like, freezes at that angle. Like, there's no animation to spawn the jiggy in spring. That animation's only in, um... Only in, what's it called? 
fall because that's where you're intended to like uh, finish the flower, right? But instead, we skipped Gobi and then we just did we did there. And the screen froze, but we were able to move during that cutscene. Uh, oh, because we got hit, and we made our way to Mumbo's hut just with like predetermined movement options. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, now we're the bee, very very broken character in the game. Perhaps the only useful transformation. Yeah, there we go. We finally made it on top of the beehive. <laughs> I was just demonstrating how great how, the bee is. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's good flying fun. It's so fun, you know? Yeah, yeah, so fun. Very fun. And you can just like clip right out, just like this. Snap, just like that. Easy peasy. All right. And now you can see the, the level is closed. So now we're gonna get this, and someone you may have noticed we haven't gone to FP yet for a second trip to beat Boggy. We're going right now, buddy. We're gonna right, go there right now as the B into FP. But first, we have to do the 765 note door clip. B is just basically broken. This hitbox is very stupid. <laughs> uh, this trick is just, it's very, very, it's actually a lot easier than most. You basically just hold up and spam it, pretty much. But yeah, the bee is very broken because it was obviously, obviously you're not supposed to beat a bee outside, so. Obviously. They said they didn't, you know, you know, try and like prevent you from going over the walls and such. But yeah. With the bee, we're going to get a lot of lair jiggies. So we're able to skip a lot of um, uh, switches and we're a lot of, able to skip a lot of jiggy jigs and a lot of extra movement as BK and just skip the jiggy jigs here. You have to see if that the ice key is here. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if it's here. Let's see, let's see. We'll get there. That'll be at the end of FP. But yes, we are in FP now. In FP, we're gonna get a couple of jiggies. The first one is this pipe jiggy. Skipping the dance, very clean, very easy. Yeah, that was a bit close, but we're gonna get this blue Jinjo. We're gonna get the Jinjo family here, which is which is why I don't know why we were getting it earlier on, but yeah, it's okay. Blue Jinjo, pink Jinjo. Uh, oh god, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Purple my... Jinjo! Purple's supposed to be my color, man. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to be taken away. He likes he likes his presents. <laughs> he likes his presents. Don't take my presents away from me. Okay. <laughs> it's the only presents I got. <laughs> yes. Oh, have you know I'm missing my family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're gonna go inside Mumbo's hut, hut, only for this uh, Jinjo. Actually, we're not gonna de-transform to do the race. We do have speed shoes now, but we're actually not gonna do that. We're gonna go all the way to the boggy as the bee, and then do boggy as the bee with some funky, funky flying. You know. First, we're gonna get this green Jinjo here, just because it's on the way. But you know, fun fact: this route, this route of option of just going to FP as the bee, it saves a good amount of time because bee movement in flight. Is uh is really fast. It's a lot faster than speed shoes. Uh, okay, so he's gonna just go here and like do boggy races the bee. Just he he's gonna be above all the slaloms. Uh, so a lot of them he's not gonna be able to see. Turning really really difficult. Ooh, that hill is the hardest point. So hopefully the rest will be okay. It's very hard because you want to ideally hold B the entire time. But if you hold B the entire time, then sometimes you might not be able to uh to make these sharp turns because B holding B makes you go faster, right? So he has to be very peculiar with his direction changes. Uh, good. That was a good section. Let's go. What a god! He got first, first try. try. Oh, epic. And yeah, as you can see, that was very fast. So. Speed shoes moves at a speed of 1,000. When you're the B and you're mo and you're just like holding B in flight, uh, you move at a speed of 1,500. So you move like, what is that? 50% faster than than speed shoes, which is really fast. So that in isolation saves like 20 seconds, just over the the thing, over um, speed shoes. So in the F ephemera, we don't do this. But doing this, if you were to do this in the FFM route, it would only lose like. It's not here. 11... <laughs> oh no. You know what that means? It's not here. Oh no. It's time to do push ups, or uh, 10 hand ends and push ups and dog skip for the fans. And dog skip. Oh no. Dude. This is where I put my ice cube. <laughs> if I had one, if I had one, <laughs> Dinkleberg. Dinkleberg. Man, I still golded oh, somehow. <laughs> 
Nice. Oh, you guys got scammed. Schlongster is the mastermind. I knew Scam it all. Got a lot of donations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oops. Oh, be intentional. <laughs> We're good. You're good. You're good. Oh gosh. Good. Nice, nice camera. I was jiggy. Your position's <laughs> just right. You're good. You're good. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is it, this is it. Taking a full 360 around. You're good. Nice! You're good. <laughs> we didn't get okay. eye jail either. There you go. <laughs> what a guy. What is this game? Well, Banjo-Kazooie is a game for the Nintendo 64 released in 1996 that involves a bear named Banjo and a bird, a naive bird named Kazooie. The, the bear's sister, Banjo, Tootie, uh, gets kidnapped by an evil witch, and this evil witch wants to steal Tootie's beauty. And in order to do so, she has this machine that's hooked up in her lair, where, where Grunty's in one machine, Tootie's in the other machine, and by the time the process is over, the Grunty will steal Tootie's beauty, and then Grunt, uh, Tootie will look ugly and be a monster and Grunty will be very very pretty but Banjo doesn't want that to happen because Tootie his beauty is her own beauty right so in order to do in order to save her uh, Banjo needs to collect uh, a lot of jiggies and a lot of a lot of notes in order to open these note doors in order to make his way up the lair section in order to get to Grunty just in time just before the whole process is complete and beat Grunty right before Oh, it was 1998. Oh, I was stupid. <laughs> right before. <laughs> Wait, what, did, what year did you say? I said 1996. I don't know why. Oh, that was like the year Nintendo 64 came out or something. I don't know. Yeah. Right before, yeah. Oh, well, whatever. Close enough. Close enough. Listen, that was the year. That was those years before I was born, alright? So I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, when were you born? 2001. No fucking way. No <laughs> shot. <laughs> well, no shot. Three years later, after Banjo was made, he's like, I know this game. <laughs> I know this game. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, this game. You were born to play Banjo. <laughs> That makes me feel ancient. <laughs> there's, a, there's a person who um, does commentary for like some of the the, the um, like randomizer stuff that we've done. His name is Ancient Gamer, and he's 65, 66. Oh my god. And yeah, wow. like That's you sick. make me feel like Ancient Gamer. <laughs> That's insane, damn. He's that old he's still that's that that guy's a genius, dude. Holy shit. Shuli's like, wow, I uh I was 30 when this game came out. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was negative three. <laughs> yeah, you weren't a twinkle in Anchors. someone's eye yet. Yeah, yeah. Damn dude. Crazy. <laughs> All right, well We're in Furnace Fun now. Furnace Fun has a lot of skips. The current skip is called Moonpox Skip. What we're gonna do is we're gonna in between each tile here there's a one pixel of lines where you can do moves you can use any moves uh so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide into that pixel get into talent shot and while we're getting into talent shot we're gonna continue sliding just a tiny bit onto the death square here and while we're entering talent shot the game still thinks we're banjo right we're, they still thinks we're not in talent shot oh we got it talent. right <laughs> <Wrongster. laughs> no. oh. i was like wait is it nine the wrong answer <laughs> you're supposed to get it wrong but it's okay. We got a backup. Hey man, what are yeah. you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So you're supposed to get. In, the game doesn't think you're in talent shot until you're fully in talent shot. So you, which means that you can answer the move, the the question while you're getting in talent shot. And if you get the question wrong in talent shot, it'll recoil you with the talent shot damage animation instead of just flicking you off the board. And when it flicks you off the board, normally. It has to take down the walls around the whole like platform, uh, so you can you know go over, off the board. So since the walls are down, we can just jump across. And that's what Slonster's doing now. Slonster unfortunately got the first question right, so <laughs> we, we have to go do that backup square. He, he just wanted to show the backup, like a nice guy. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to be nice. He wanted to give everybody a chance to get those donations in because the Banjo Kazooie raffle prizes close in. Uh, oh, in like whenever this run ends, depending exactly. on how long it takes to do door. Oh, oh! I forgot oh. to do door guns. How about this? What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think this is? <laughs> oh my god! But, but See, it, I was, wasn't there. Now you're just in the door. Bro. You, you, <laughs> you're on the screen and tip top. <laughs> 
What have you done right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is, but it's all, oh, see, now I get to show off some more cool tricks after the run. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you using my Everdrive, my secret, secret Everdrive, I'll show Dog Skip and another cool trick. Oh, we're not going after the run. <laughs> <laughs> darn it, darn it. <laughs> we're gonna, you're gonna put your webcam up, we're gonna see you do handstand push-ups. Like hand 20, 20 handstand push-ups now. 20. He's just yeah. gonna invert the camera and squat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. I didn't... <laughs> I messed it up! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what, what <are> <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. He's all but I put on. He's all but I put on. <laughs> he doesn't actually speed run the game. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually a casual, I'm actually a casual player. <laughs> Asmi's like, Asmi's doing like the, the SpongeBob. Like, toe. <laughs> He's a radio in his head. Oh my gosh, I'm so dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Big toe, SpongeBob. They're going too fast. They're going too fast. Freeze, Mister. Big toe. Cheating? <laughs> cheating? Are we cheating? Cheating? Oh. What? <laughs> Mrs. Huff, I think I am cheating. What? No! What? what are you talking about? SpongeBob! Why? Why? Why did you not finish your essay? <laughs> God, okay. Damn. Zero feathers calculated. I oh, like your Loki really good bunk section. Zero <laughs> feathers, four beef bunks. Oh, not bad. Yeah. Not too shabby. Doesn't make up for not doing dog skip, but. A uh, crap. <laughs> That's right. You no, know, I was like so excited because when you were like, "Oh my god!" I thought you got dog skip first try. <laughs> you just did yeah, yeah, he skipped the dog. I was like, he skipped doing the skip. That's exactly what he did. I just heard Asmi talking about dog skip, and while he was talking about it, I just put the jiggies, and I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> oh my gosh, I practiced it so much too. <laughs> If only I would have practiced not putting in the jiggies. <laughs> if only you practiced not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Phone me, phone me, phone me. Donations were like, where's my money? <laughs> where's my money? <laughs> where's my... We, we were promised Krusty Krab cheeseburgers. <laughs> My Where's game? Krabby my the dog Clown? Skip. How am I supposed to enjoy my banjo kazoo 100 percent speed on without my dog skip? <laughs> my diet Dr. Kelp. My diet Dr. Kelp. Oh. You call yourself a delivery boy? Well, I ain't buying! <laughs> Here's your pizza! <laughs> it's on the house! <laughs> <laughs> No drink? Oh, ate the whole thing in one bite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ginger nigga. Oh boy. No possible way you can mess up anymore. I wonder if there's a way you could soft lock Don't in ginger nigga. <laughs> There is. Don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Let's go! Sub 230! <laughs> Alright. 20 handstand push ups right now. Alright, here we go. Where's, where's the cam? He didn't say time, by the way. It was 229 24. Oh, yeah. 229. Yeah. There, there we go. Alright. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Clock, stop the timer. Make, make it bigger. Make your screen bigger. I'm gonna, make it, I'm gonna make it fit the size. Let's see. Just transform. Where's, where's the transform? Make it four three, please. All right. Okay, he really is a. He really is a one piece fan. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Well, I'll be. I love one piece. It's so great. All right. Right. Right here's an optimal uh, place to be. Okay. Here we go. All right. Come on. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's get this bread. Let's you want nice the... yellow shorts like Banjo? Perfect. Let's hope they don't fall down. Let's hope he doesn't break his neck. <laughs> Please don't break One, your neck. Two, three, four. Look at this guy go. Pony, you got any 20 songs, sir? 
Keep going. I like how he's like almost off camera. <laughs> what did I tell you? This is not how I thought I'd spend my Sunday night. <laughs> not even close. Keep going. Twenty. Uh, Honor system, I guess. Honor system. Yeah! Alright, press one in the chat if you if you, if you like that. Let's go! Twenty <laughs> handstand push-ups, baby. Twenty hell yeah, let's go. <sighs> All right, that was kind of impressive. <laughs> See, we got. I got you. I got you. You get a you get a slight pass. He made he made up for it. He. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got Yoshi in the background. He's got Thickums in the background. Grunty is now trapped under a boulder. And yeah. So, do you guys uh, want to plug yourself? How can people find you after the marathon? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Songster, go ahead. So, I'm uh, Schlongster7, S H L O N G S T E R 7, speedrun BK, and occasionally um, Ocarina of Time randomizers. Same thing with uh, Asmi1 here. Yes, full time <laughs> Ocarina of Time randomizer streamer. Go follow me. Follow, follow, um, um, let's see, let's see. Follow, follow Conditioner. He's like, he's a piece of shit. It's All also right, his birthday on. today, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 he, he's a really good Ocarina of Time randomizer runner, but he's also he's also he's also an old fart. Yeah. If you see Slonsky's head right now, it's kinda shiny. Conditioner's head is old oh boy. You could polish a bowling ball and it wouldn't even be close. You know that SpongeBob yeah. movie where they're like sh too shiny, shiny, my eyes! That that's his head right there. <laughs> Right. Well, I, I'll tell you what. If they, if we were at the Oscars, the hook and the music would be playing. <laughs> Thank you so much to Schlongster and Asmi. I will honestly say I'll never forget this run. <laughs> uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. We're going to take a quick pause for the cause, pay some bills, keep the lights on. And when we come back, we'll be getting ready for the last run of Weekend 1, Jack and Daxter. So stay tuned oh, for that. Yeah, thank you for letting me be a part of this.